Uh, for Somerset, we will have uh, the views of Graham Smith and Ian Black. Well, Graham Smith playing his last ever games. Well, possibly two, possibly one. Depends how this one goes for Somerset this season. And for uh, the Foxes, the defending champions, we'll talk to Jeremy Snape and also to Darren Maddy. So we're all set. Everybody's on their way out of the middle who needs to be. And up in the commentary box, already in location, Robert Croft and Nasser Hussain. The two Somerset opening batsmen, Matt Wood and Graham Smith, South African captain, Somerset captain. And they're up against the champions, the Leicestershire Foxes. Classic day so far, runs aplenty. Good surface at the oval. Some good players on show, some good players in this second semi-final as well. Otis Gibson take the first over. There's Graham Smith, strike rate nearly 150. Hero, that very fine opening batsman from South Africa. Jimmy Cook, Mango Grove, never heard of him. And he likes a bit of rugby. He looks like a rugby player to me. Very fine leader of men, Graham Smith. Somerset loaded with batting three times this season. They've got over 200 in this competition. Their average score in this competition, 204. Remember, they do play at Taunton. Similar to this pitch, the ball does disappear in all directions. But they're up against the champions. Somehow, Leicester get themselves through. Combination of team spirit, fielding, won the final last year. First ball of the second semi-final. Yeah, as you mentioned there, Nash, Leicestershire find the way. They're a workman-like team. They play really hard for each other. Not so many stars in their team. They have the knowledge. They've been here before. They've had success up against the new boys. Uh, Somerset have come through their preliminary stage very well. They've got the finals day. They've got tremendous support here. They've got a few more stars playing. Lots of guys with international experience. It's a mouth-watering encounter. Well, these two must be able to bat pretty well. Marcus Triscothic, the England opening batsman, has been moved down to number three. Graham Smith didn't want to break up his opening. There you go. Two good friends debating last week, possibly debating next week. Triscothic trying to get some tips about how to go about getting a good score here. Triscothic with the pads on, next in. Smith's away. Back cut down to third man. He's coming back for two. Good running. Good intent there shown from the captain, shown to the rest of the team that he's up for it. It's not all about boundaries. A good back cut down wide of points right hand. And he's gone off like a hare. Not really known for his speed between the wickets. A big man, but turns quite sharply and he knows he wants two. Pumps those legs and he gets home. Otis Gibson just passed a fitness test on his back and hamstring to play in this game. Didn't play in the championship game against Essex in the week. It's a good line to Graham Smith. We've all seen Matthew Hoggard dismiss Graham Smith, bowling straight and then adjusting to outside off stump. Graham Smith very much a leg side player, closed bat's face. It's a good line to him. Yeah, I played against Otis Gibson and played with him down at Glamorgan. Uh, difficult bowler to play against because you don't get a heck of a lot from his run up. And at the last minute, it's quite a jerky action, a strong shoulder, very, very strong man. And if he gets in with a bat later on, he can smack it a long way. Wait! Well, this is a good start from Otis Gibson. Just three runs off four deliveries. Off on the first few overs, set the tone. They look nervous in their warm-ups, Leicester. Looking around their faces from the dugout. There's some sharp intake of air from various players. have got a little bit of inexperience. I think they've got more expectation on them this year as well. I think last year they were allowed to sneak up on the rails, but this year more is expected. Well, there you go. That's not the line to Graham Smith. If you're going to uh, uh, offside, don't get onto his stumps, especially if it's not swinging a mile. He's so strong through the leg side. Look at that closed back face, four runs. 
Terrific shot, good timing as well. A big man, a big heavy bat. He doesn't need a big full swing, just concentrates on the timing. Um, he's one of those guys, having played against him this year, who does certainly target the leg side. In fact, when he advances down the wicket, he tends to look to go over mid-wicket as well. So, a real bottom-handed player we describe him as. Last ball of the first over, seven runs off the first over. Let's go down to Charles Cove, we'll see who he's with. Well, I'm down here in the Somerset Sabres dugout, I'm with Marcus Truscothic, amongst others. Marcus, uh, is this your first game of 2020 of the season for, uh, for Somerset? For Somerset, yeah, obviously we played the international game at the Rose Bowl, um, but for Somerset, yeah, definitely. And you're not opening, I think it's a bit odd here, is it? Watching somebody else batting and you thinking, I've still got to go in. Yeah, a little bit. It's the second time, both, both times I've played for Somerset, I've batted three. Um, but I don't mind, honestly. You know, obviously, you could, you could be in, in the first over, you just never know. But, you know, these guys have started off really well the whole season, so it's uh, keep, good to keep them together. Now, what you watch, obviously watch the first semi final. Um, does that colour the sort of influences and influence the way you think about this game? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think you can only just judge what the wicket's like and it, as, as normal at the Oval here to Belter. So, um, you know, we have our certain plans we put in place to play against Leicester before we uh, arrived at the ground. Um, I don't think they've really changed too much. What have they done? We'll have to wait and see, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> They're not listening, right? You can tell me. And what about the mascot race? Did you enjoy that? Yeah, great fun. We're having a good laugh out there, watching Stumpy, our mascot, having a shocker. So uh, <laughs> it was good to see the guys having a good well, time. Well, let's, let's, let's just hope that that's the last shocker that the Sabres have. And, uh, of course, Girls Aloud coming up. Are you a big Girls Aloud fan, Marcus? You look yeah, as though you probably sort of... Tap your toe along. Yeah, I was always a big fan of uh, the Spice Girls, so um, <laughs> girl, girls are loud and they're taking over that. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> sort of. Right, OK. <laughs> well, I'll take your word for it. Back upstairs. The Scothic and the Spice Girls, Robert, eh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> enough said there, Nass, I think. Um, <laughs> Shaw Willoughby's on. South African versus South African. Smith will have seen a lot of him, and if anybody's going to swing this ball here today, it's Charles Willoughby, who certainly relies on it. Charles Willoughby has got good memories of bowling against Somerset this season. CNG trophy back in May, I think it was, covered on Sky. Willoughby with six wickets, six for 16, his best ever bowling figures. And you're right, he does give it a chance to swing. Away from the left-hander. That's a cracking shot. That really is a very, very fine shot. Good use of the feet. Willoughby, in fairness, has pitched it full, looking for swing, but Smith is on to it in flash. A good swing of the bat. He's taken his right foot off. It's all the way for four. Good stride. Stands deep in the crease, but still gets that weight moving forward. Head over the ball. A good, clean strike. Well, we've got some good players on show at finals day. The teams have landed pretty well here. Good comeback from Willoughby. The Somerset lineup. Full of international players. England have released Triscothic. Come and play Andrew Caddick. Richard Johnson. Virtually an international side. Blackwell. Scothic having a little bit of a stretch there. Blackwell, the danger man. Good bit of field in there, just misses the stumps. Shows intensity that H.D. Ackerman is showing as well. He wants to get his troops going. Pushed out into the covers, good quick pickup. Had he hit? Ooh, I think we're looking at he'd have gone. He could have kept going. Both sides are up for it. They realise there's a place in the final waiting. There's a misfield. A comeback for two. Good running, sloppy fielding from Dinesh Mongia. End of the second over, 15 without loss. Works into mid-wicket, a little bit of swing there, actually. Eyes gone quickly for the run-up. He has attacked it in fairness, but the recovery was quite slow. Bit of a fumble, and they get back for two, but they're certainly up for it, the Somerset team. They're, they're pitting a lot of their expertise in running between the wickets. 
They realise it's not all about boundaries. And the crowd have come in now. Lancashire Surrey members would have stayed on. Now obviously joined by Leicester and Somerset fans. Cracking atmosphere out there. 23,000 people in at the Oval. And they haven't been disappointed so far. Down the wicket, as Robert Cross said, when he does come down the wicket, he favours mid on mid wicket. Graham Smith is leading by example. He's done that again. He's lined up, targeted early balls in the over for four, and then that allows him to tick it around later on. Comes down, a big bottom hand comes through. Good strike, good effort mid on, but couldn't quite get there. Four runs to the captain, Smith. Change of plan from Leicester. Ackerman takes a slip out, puts him on the drive, leg side. H.D. Ackerman himself on the box on the leg side. Down the wicket again, that's a good line. Make Smith go offside. If he hits you through the offside, say, well done. Don't let him drag you to the leg side. Good comeback, Otis Gibson. A strong bowler, hits the pitch hard. Ex-international himself, played one test match, I believe, for the West Indies. Strong and has played out in South Africa as an overseas player and will have experienced playing against these guys before. H.D. Ackman placed himself at short mid-wicket, nearly Great got work, a chance. Smith doing the bulk of the scoring, had most of the strike. If you would, he's only had two deliveries, Graham Smith 13. As we saw in the first game, Stuart Law and Maliki Lloyd dovetail in this tournament. One takes the strike, one hits the ball, one just nurdles it around. I think Graham Smith's going to be the aggressor for Somerset. Lots of chat, Otis Gibson. Surrey, remember, was slow in the first semi-final. Leicester can't afford to make the same mistake. We've got a couple of spinners, though, Rob, and I was speaking to Jeremy Snape before this semi-final, and he went, yeah, great. If we win this game, I've got a bowl at Simons, Flintoff, Stuart Law, Maliki Loy and Dominic Cork. Welcome to the Pleasure Dome. Um, certainly as well, it's, uh, it's a tough ask. Good, uh, good over this so far, he's gone for five. This stage, first six overs, 63 for Lancashire in the first semi-final. So they'd have been watching, both sides were here watching that game, they'd have set targets, possibly 60. End of the third over, 20 without loss. Right down the leg side. Jeremy, Nasser here. Hi, Nas. What do you reckon of the start? Um, I just think we're a little bit nervous, a few jangles. Uh, Smith's coming hard at us and we haven't quite got it as disciplined as we'd like to have done. Are you jangling? Not too bad. Well done, Jimmy. Hey, Jeremy, it's Rob up here. Hey, Crofty. Uh, good, mate. Now, last year, the pitch up at Edgebaston took a lot of spin. You took a lot of pace off it. Are you going to have any different approach today? I think very different approach. Most of the slow balls have ended up in the new stand. A little bit of fielding, half stop. It was a short run from Willoughby. It was full again, and Jeremy, correction, Graham Smith hit it straight back down the ground. Allenby with the stop. Yeah, Jess, again. So, uh, finish that off, mate. You're going to have a different approach this time round? I think we've just got to see how it goes, mate. You know what it's like? You've got to bowl a few balls and see how your action feels and the sort of pace we want to bowl at. We want to try and bowl as many balls at that pace as we can. Clever cricketer, Jeremy Snape. Always thinking on his feet. Useful member of any side. Gives them lots of energy. Very fine fielder in that backward point position. Hit the winning runs last year, Jeremy Snape, in this tournament. He'll be very proud of that. And he'll want to be in that final.
Good delivery there from Charles Willoughby. Strong man, good pair of shoulders on him. Ambles up, gets a bit of in-swing. Oh, umpires love that sort of delivery. They don't see enough of it, they keep telling me. Left arm in-swing. Oh, I think the fact that he advanced down the wicket had saved him there. But from Hawkeye, it's hit the middle and leg. Well, that's another full toss, and it's put away. Wood's first boundary, it's taken him seven deliveries, but he missed the first ball, it was very close, got away with it. Went for a Yorker, Willoughby, straight to full toss and got dispatched. And how often do you find that when you think you've had a good shout, you think you should have had a wicket, you just lose concentration a little bit, the next ball goes for four, you see so much of that in cricket. Last ball of the fourth over. Back of a length, it's through the infield. Maunders does the chasing, the slide, and they settle for two. 30 for naught after four overs. Good start, Somerset. Yeah, they started off well. Graham Smith, the skipper, got 19 of 16. Matthew Wood, 9 off 8. He's just starting to flow, but look who's coming. You've got Tris Gothic and you've got Blackwell and Hildreth. All fine strikers of a ball. Parsons, the, the wily one in the middle who can chip it, nerdle it. Durston, we'll see what he can do, and Gazard can also strike it very well. It's a bad ball from Otis Gibson. You can't be short. Your skipper has just brought fine leg up to leg slip. And you really cannot be short on this pitch. Leicester have only conceded 160 or more once this season. I reckon it might be twice after today. Yeah, when you've got your deep square in front of square, there's nobody home just down by fine leg or just past, just wider fine leg. Goes all the way to four runs. Well, that's huge. The moment it left the bat, everyone knew exactly where that was going. It was going for six. It just sounded great off the middle of the bat. As a batsman, they tell me, you love this sound. Yes, Nas, I'll tell you about it later, but that was a fantastic shot. He's come all the way down, nearly out of the park again. He's pumped now, the skipper. Don't run, don't spoil the shot. That's what Viv Richards used to say. He's going for it, Graham Smith. He's not holding back. His last day as Somerset captain this season. Might be his last game. He might have one later this evening. 29 runs from 19 balls. There's some good players on show. Good players and a good surface. Generally means runs. A catch we have seen some incredible catches this season and David Masters has pulled off one of the all-time greats and don't the Fox it love it even Graham Smith has to have a little giggle to himself what a catch a superb bit of cricket athletic it shows what these modern day cricketers have to do can that help turn the game for the Leicester Foxes a decent delivery Smith has decided he's he's feeling in the bubble, he wants to keep going. He's picked out mid on. He's going back, he's going back, using good feet. Left hand up in the air, full strength. Oh, what a tremendous catch that was. Look at it. And he's got up, he's pumped, and look at the skipper. He loves him for it. Oh, what a great catch. What does Graham Smith think of it? Not a lot. An incredible, incredible catch. It took something special to get rid of Graham Smith. He's gone for 29, Somerset, 40 for one. There he is, David Masters. Good effort, yes, take a bow, definitely. Catch that one, yes. Absolutely brilliant. Young man on the biggest of stages. He's taken a wonderful catch. You'll remember that forever. Who does it bring to the crease? Only the England opener, Marcus Triscothic. Now then, interesting part of the play. Does Triscothic come in 
and take on the role that Smith had, which was the aggressor, which allows Wood to just nerdle it around. This is what they'll have to communicate between themselves. I think Chris Gothic will be positive. He likes batting at this ground. He's already got 100 this season. Against Bangladesh in this ground. He's got a test match, double 100 here against South Africa. You'd have taken that catch, Robert, wouldn't you? Yeah, but I wouldn't have needed the dive. <laughs> no, that's tremendous. I think perhaps 12, 13 years ago, I would have had a half a chance, but uh, the way that this boy uses his physique, his good feet, he's got into position quickly and thrown that left hand up. What a tremendous catch, and he's rolled well so that his elbow doesn't hit the ground. There is no better feeling than taking a catch like that. You will remember that for so long, TV cameras around, probably the biggest crowd he's ever played in front of, and the first thing he does is that. Does he love it? Look at that, and his players love him for it. It's the team spirit. Big challenge here. Willoughby be looking to take Triscothic out. Can they get two wickets? A little bit of swing for Willoughby. What I enjoyed was Graham Smith's reaction. We've seen the Leicester Foxes' reaction. Let's have a look at Smith's reaction again. Yeah, we've seen it. There it goes. And let's have a little look at Smith. Ah, oh, you can't believe it. Why the long Smith? Why the long face, Graham Smith? The easiest of players to catch out as well, Graham Smith. And dropped occasionally in a test match. Yeah, I seem to remember that one, mate. Wasn't that costly either? No, just 260 runs later. Well, he's starting them off very well, in fairness. He's given them good impetus, good momentum. 43 or 5.2. It's got them off and running. Now it's up to the middle order to capitalise. Willoughby mixing it up well here. In swinger followed by ball straight across. Watch him just use the angle here. No shake back in. Just going straight across. Triscothic will be under a little bit of pressure. As Andrew Flintoff was. He hasn't played any 2020 for Somerset, so he'll feel a little bit like the outsider. Okay, crashing the party. But boy, do they need him to get some runs. That's a good shot. Use of his feet. Will it go away for four? It generally does here at the Oval. Great effort. He's just decided to flick it back in, and it's caught his arm on the way through. I think that shows how much the rain has had an effect in this outfield. Before the rain, that would have skipped on easily. But... Um, Unlucky there for Henderson, he's gone down, which spinners have gone down. Ah, sorry, mate, hands up. As I say, Leicester only conceded 160 or more once this season. 177 for five against Yorkshire. I think they're going to have to... The mindset that they are going to chase possibly their biggest score of the season to reach the final. Flip to the leg side, just settle for one. End of the sixth over, 48 for one. I think both sides will um, be looking back at that six overs and think they were missed opportunities. I think Leicestershire, as they were starting to impose themselves on the opposition, they let Smith come in, especially with Otis Gibson, and, and smack a few boundaries, which give them back the momentum. Somerset would say, well, had we got to this stage being 50 for naught, we'd be a lot happier with our gun batsman in Smith's, with Smith still in. This battle is still very much in the balance. We've got Darren Maddy coming on, a wealth of experience. He's Him, along with Adam Hollyoak, have been Mr. 2020. He'll be expect. well, there'll be a lot of great things expected from him from the Leicester supporters and the team today. 
Well, in the first semi-final, 63 was scored by both sides of the first six overs. 48 for Somerset, so Leicester will be pleased with that. And the pitch again from Wood, possibly leg buys. Just wondering whether Paul Nixon should come down, come up to the stumps. 50 up after 6.1 overs. There he is, Nixon is up to the stumps. 50 took 37 deliveries. That's about par, I'd say, in 2020 cricket. Use the fielding restrictions. And a brilliant catch. And it's just turned things Leicester's way. He's playing a solid inning so far, Wood. Looks to me that he's been given the role to hold one end up all the way through. Try and finish with a strike rate of around 100 and let the other guys who come in alongside him really put the foot on the on the pedal. Well, we've seen a lot of short run-ups from the Leicester boys. We saw one from Willoughby. There was one there from Maddie. They're trying not to have a run penalty. But they're over eight. So much discussion has to go on in 2020 cricket, especially with a left-hand, right-hand combination. Field always changing got to hurry through always looking at that time left to make sure you get your overs in just gothic looks like he's just given himself a few balls to find his feet out there it's not easy as we, sh we saw with andrew flintoff earlier in the first game to come in and blast it from ball one. You still need to give yourself the opportunity to feel the pace of the wicket, feel the pace of the bowlers, get used to the atmosphere. No matter how much cricket you've played, to come to 2020 finals day is always a new experience. No! No boundaries yet from Maddie. And I guess in 2020 as a bowler, that is all you're concerned with. Yes, take wickets. As long as you don't go for four and sixes, you're happy. Seven runs off the over, he'll take that. One ball left, though. Good over from Darren Maddy, 55 for one. There's the projected scores. Nine and over would get him up to 172. Change of bowling at both ends, it's David Masters. And he took that wonderful catch. Change up here, Ian Ward and Charles Colville. Thanks, Nasser. It was a brilliant catch, wasn't it, by David Masters. Absolutely outstanding. It's up there. The debate is raging, which was better? That one or the Trout one? We might have a look at it. Both of them in a minute or two. But uh, here comes Masters. A little bit of rain falling. We don't want that, though, so we can stop, please. And he's straight away on the target. And straight away, Ian, Paul Nixon is standing up. A yeah, good idea from Nixon to come up to the stumps. David Masters isn't particularly quick. Can get a little bit of bounce, a little bit of extra loopy bounce when he gets it right. But this is putting the pressure on the batsman with the keeper up to the stumps. They cannot take liberties, can't use their crease with any confidence. If they miss it, the keeper's there to stump them. Matthew Wood up to 21 from 20 balls. Well, David Masters has already been in the thick of it. A quite outstanding catch to get rid of Graham Smith. Lucas Gibson was the bowler. And here he goes, take off. Oh, how did he get there? Twizzle. So that was today. Now, earlier in the season in 2020, Jim Troughton of Warwickshire hung on to this one. Actually, it was against Somerset. Which is the greater? Which is the better? Wouldn't like to split them. They're both outstanding. Real athleticism from both Masters and Troughton. Who's your favourite at home? Cricket at SkySports.com. Let us know. Two beauties, but which one would you choose at home? Got it still yet to really get going. He's been in for five balls now for two singles. But he has got loads of time here. 
we all know that if Marcus gets going in seven overs, he could he could get 60 or 70 off his own bat with the demolition he did on Bangladesh in the Test match. Slightly surprised he didn't open here, Charles. I know they're trying to keep the continuity going. The Somerset Savers trying to stick faithfully to the men that got them to this position in the competition. But when you've got someone like Triscothic as an opener, as an experienced opener at international level, why not use him? Why not make the most of him? Well, it's an interesting question, this subject of batting Time orders, good. especially when you get big stars bus back into your side. Obviously, you're not going to leave Marcus Triscothic out, but Somerset actually got quite an interesting turnover in personnel from the side that we saw earlier on in the season down at Taunton. Neither of the Francis boys are playing. No, Gareth Andrew, he's not playing. Fifty-eight for one after eight. Well down in the dugout. Graham Smith is there, and he's still got his pads on. He obviously cannot believe what has happened. Graham, you're not going to get another go. I know that. I'm just uh, waiting to make my trek up to our box up at uh, level 13. Yeah. What a catch that was, though. Could you believe it? No, I couldn't believe it. I thought I had four runs, but uh, oh, good catch, and nothing you can do about it. Have you seen it? Have you seen it on the monitor, which is just close by you? Yeah, too many times. <laughs> Here it comes again, then. Up she goes, take off, and whoosh, in it comes. Quite brilliant. So what are you thinking, then, as you've uh, hit that and you're going down? You're well, thinking, that's four, are you? Yeah, I felt like we needed one big over to get ourselves to a good start in the first six, and I was uh, trying to take on Otis, and uh, so that was the over that I was taking a bit of a punt on, and uh, I, thought I, I thought I had another boundary there. Well, there's another boundary for Somerset now. They're 62 for one. Jeremy Snape into the attack for the first time. Just quickly before we let you go on your trek up to level 13, what score will you be happy with here, Graham? I think uh, somewhere close in the, in the area of 200 would be a good score for us, and uh, we can allow us to put a lot of pressure on their batting, and, uh, and I think that'll be a winning score for us. OK, we'll let you go. Good lad, good lad. Back for two. Be interesting just to uh, when we get to the 10 over mark of this innings, Ian, just see what the 10 over scores were in the first semi final. Well, at this stage, off the top of my head, there'd be a, quite a large disparity between the two. Definitely slower this second semi final so far, but these two are keeping the scoreboard ticking over nicely. They're scoring regularly, They're hitting the ball into the gaps and taking ones, but where I was so impressed with Andy Simons in the first semi-finals. He found the gaps, but he managed to get the ball into position where they could always look for two. At this stage, the Somerset batsmen, they're not able to even look really for two. They're pushing hard and trying, but they're not able to come back for those twos. And you turn the ones into twos, you do that five or six times, and that really is a big bonus come the end of your innings. Scott, it looks to me like he is really setting himself up for something later on. He's not taking any chances or any risks at the moment. Just to tell you that at the 10 over mark in that first semi final, and we're what, six balls, eight balls away from 10 overs in this innings, Lancashire were 95 and Surrey were 100. Really, really slow ball from Snape, but uh, Wood watched it well. He delayed his shot and then. And flogged it out really on the offside. It was good bowling from Jeremy Snape. Absolutely no pace on the ball at all for Matthew Wood to work with. Here he goes to the leg side, looking for something extravagant, something brutal. Just no pace whatsoever on the ball to hit through it. Snape's a canny operator here. Nine runs so far from this oval. Yes. Misfield by Snape. Unlike him. So 10 off the over, the four helped off the first ball. Nine overs gone, 68 for one. And unless something very dramatic happens in this over, I think what we were saying right before the game started, that this is likely to be a lower scoring semi than the first one, it is coming to pass. Well, that was certainly your call. I went the other way. I thought it would be right up there, 185, 190. And there's a story so far. Graham Smith out to that wonderful catch from Masters off the bowling of Otis Gibson for 29. Wood has played carefully. 
but effectively he's 30 not out from 25 and Triscothic is just taking his time. Gibson has one over left, Charles Willoughby has an over left and there's one piece for, or one bowl for Maddie, Masters and Snape. This is Masters, as the rain gets a bit steadier, and that's gone through the covers for four, that's not a terribly good piece of fielding, it's a really good shot from Triscothic, just beginning to uh, tick here, but the rain is beginning to tick as well, HD wants to go off. I think HD Ackerman is suggesting that it's a bit greasy out there, and the reason he's missed that is because he's either lost his footing or the ball has skimmed across the square area there, and he hasn't been able to get any sort of traction in his feet, only part of his hand on the ball. Triscothe goes big, big, huge, straight down the ground, and he's nearly killed one of the members when we were waiting for him to go, Charles, and I think he's just decided that time is enough. He's had a good enough look here, he's had a good enough time at the middle to gauge the pace of the ball, to gauge the pace of the wicket, and he feels comfortable. That's a wonderful shot. I wonder whether the other thing that has just crossed his mind is if there is rain falling and say this was suddenly to become a short and semi-final, he wants to get as many runs on the board before the rain comes down to help him with a Duckworth-Lewis recalculation. Obviously there are lots of uh, possibilities for reduction of the various intervals, but it may just have crossed his mind that uh, that would be a, a prudent move. You might be right, Charles. He's certainly a very deep-thinking cricketer. He will know all the permutations. He'll know how Duckworth Lewis is implemented. But I just fancy that he felt that it was time to kick on. He'd had a little look, and now he was going to go. It'll be a wide down the leg side. Good taste, but take by Nixon, but it's a wide. Good news from uh, the weathermen is that the... Uh, Clouds are broken and it's much brighter down to the west inland where the rain is coming from. So with a bit of luck, this is just a passing shower and it'll be gone in a trice and they'll just play through it. I'm sure they'll try and play through it. Now this semi-final is due to finish around about six o'clock and with the Final not scheduled to start until 7.15. That just shows you they've got quite a bit of time to uh, play with the technical committee to make sure that we get all the cricket possible in. Shorter run. Wood doesn't mind that, though. He smacks it for four. Well, David Masters has just kicked the footholds in disgust. He can't believe he's gone for a boundary off the final ball of the over. 16 runs have come from that, the 10th over, and it's a majestic shot from Matthew Wood. Didn't try and hit the ball too hard, it was all timing. And he's found the boundary brilliantly. In fact, it wasn't off the last ball, it was off the penultimate ball, so a lovely shot down the ground. It's still raining, Charles. That's the unfortunate thing. 10. We're at the halfway stage, then, of this Somerset Sabres innings, and they're 85 for one. Jeremy Snape starts his second over. Other spinners to come into play for Leicestershire will be Henderson and probably finish Mongier as well. But of course, this weather won't be helping. Now, what's going on here? Looks to me like the umpires are getting together to have a little chat. And uh, the umpires have decided that with uh, heavy rain falling, and it is now heavier than it's been uh, at all during this little uh, shower, they have to go off. Nobody's exactly hurrying off. Brollies are going up. Nobody looks that concerned in the crowd. But this is obviously another disappointment that we have uh, another break for rain. Five left. You see, it's a lovely sunny day here. Bang, bang, Jess. Come on, Jess. Yeah. Sunglasses, very much the order of the day. Five balls left in Jeremy Snape's second over. We're in the 11th over of the innings. 86 for one. Triscothic on strike. And that's not a very convincing start by Marcus Triscothic. No, but it's well bowled by Jeremy Snape. It'd be very easy to come on, had a bit of a sit down, had a break, realise you've got five deliveries of the over still to go and just try and get through as quickly as you can, the first delivery, get your action going, bowl it quicker. He didn't. A lot of skill to take the pace off that. And he 
rather deceived Marcus Truscothic in the flight there. High in the air, this could be out. Oh, what a drop! Dennis Mungia, I'm afraid to say that's a miss of gargantuan proportions. Well, he's in both ends of the scale of fielding. Masters is quite outstanding athletic one-handed effort. And then this, well, I'll let the pictures speak. Oh, dear. Well, slower and slower from Jeremy Snape. He really is hanging that up there. Poor old Dinesh Mongir. If he could find a hole to crawl into right now, if the earth would only open up and allow him off the stage, he'd be quite happy to take it. But at the moment, he knows it's just been on the big screen again. But that is a bad miss. It would have been the perfect start for Leicestershire Foxes after the rain break. But they've blown it. Bad miss, but it's been a wonderful over from Jeremy Snape. Only five balls to complete this over after the rain break, and he's bowled really well. The over is completed, just three runs from it. A long over because of the rain break. But Jeremy Snape will be very, very disappointed that Matthew Wood's been given a life. Here it is again. Very high moon ball from Jeremy Snape. Matthew Wood rather deceived in the flight. In the end, decided to try and sweep slog it. He's just missed it. Simple as that. He'll catch them 99 times out of 100, Dinesh Monge. He's just had a break. He's been sat down for a while. Perhaps his mind wasn't spot on. Wasn't back on the game. Well, Dennis Mongier is now going to have a bow. Just tell us how difficult a catch was that. I mean, we say that it's a bad miss, but it actually went up quite a long way. It might have been spinning. Yeah, it might have been sw spinning, and uh, the wind is picked up a little bit here at the Brit Oval, but you, know, you catch those all the time in practice. He'll have no excuse. He won't try and make any excuses either. It was a catch that should have been taken, but unfortunately he's grasped it. But it's amazing how we've gone from one range. David Masters, absolutely brilliant, leaping like a salmon to... Uh, a village green catch going down. Well, that's a terrible piece of cricket by Leicestershire, but this... Hey! Oh, I think that's going to be really close. Well, goodness gracious, Charles Willoughby, the man who didn't... who sort of mucked up the fielding. They tried to steal a second. But he's arrowed the reply, the response in, and now he's going to be history here, surely. No surprise that uh, he has given it out. The third umpire, George Sharp, has given the decision out. This is for the crowd by a long way now it's either it's either very lucky from Charles Willoughby or he's been very very clever and outfoxed Matthew Wood well you'd expect the Foxes to do that but Matthew Wood's led a bit of a charm life given that life but just watch this that's a bad miss then Willoughby doesn't bother to pick it up and now they try and steal a second at which point Willoughby realizes he better pick it up and fire it in and instead of being a cheeky little second it's a disastrous second well, he's done him completely. Will it be as completely done for Matthew Wood? I think he thought it had gone straight through his legs out towards the boundary. But it wasn't, it was hid behind him by about a yard. What a bonus for the Leicestershire Foxes. Blackwell's in. Blackwell and Trescothic, two big, powerful left-handers. How will Blackwell start here? How will we play this? Starts with a sweep. Well, Dinesh Mongier will be so relieved that with his first ball, he's engineered the run out of Wood because Wood was the man that he dropped in the last over from Snape. So everything back on an even keel now for the Foxes. Mongia can put the drop behind him. And at 90 for two, it's now a question of Truscothic and Blackwell rebuilding this innings and uh, just trying to get everything back on track. Truscothic's in on the act with the sweep and he's going to get four. It was Blackwell made sure he hit the ball hard. This was delicate and clever from Marcus Truscothic. Got down nice and early. Very good sweeper of the ball. Just watch his concentration, watches it straight onto the face of the bat. See how the wrist just rolled round to get it fine of that man out on the sweep. Low, wrist just rolling over it. Four priceless runs.
Slog sweet. Another four. Mongear under the cosh. So from the subtle death sweep from Triscothic, you now see a bit more power, a bit more bottom hand. Not looking to hit it behind square, always going in front of square. Not interested in keeping the ball down. But look again how he's watched the ball. Never took his eye off the ball until it hit the blade. And that's out! Well, that's a bit of a giveaway by Triscothic, really. He's hit him for two fours. And this one is bludgeoned straight at Ackerman at extra cover. And from being in the depth of despair, Mongia is now on the top of the world because he's picked up the big, big wicket of Triscothic. Well, you're dead right, Charles. This is a big wicket. Triscothic looking to go through the offside, looking for another boundary. Just couldn't keep the ball on the floor. Big wicket, big loss for Somerset. Triscothic's gone for 25, the Sabres 98 for three. Well, they're just losing their way a little bit here, aren't they, Somerset Sabres? But uh, into the breach now steps a young man with an enormous future, I'm sure, James Hildreth. Has a strike rate of 177 in the competition this year and 179, nearly 180 overall. Tiddlywinks expert, would you believe? No, I wouldn't believe that, actually, Charles. Okay, well, I've seen some of your profiles as well. I don't believe any of those either. Anyway, James Hildreth. On strike. Mongia's last ball. And all in all, a pretty satisfactory over that for the Leicester Foxes. All right, they conceded 10, but they've picked up a run out and also the valuable wicket of Triscothic caught in the covers. Definitely trade the runs for the wickets. Here's the dismissal of Matthew Wood, hit hard at Charles Willoughby, hit him on the leg, hurt him. He thought it gone to the boundary for at least a couple, but it's it's behind you. He turned around, picked it up, Wood and Triscothic trying to be clever. And in the end, Wood was run out. And the dismissal of Triscothic, as we've just seen, didn't keep the ball on the floor. Simple catch for HD Ackerman. And a big, big couple of wickets for the Leicester Foxes. Three men to go, Graham Smith for 29, Matthew Wood run out for 38 and Triscothic for 25. So. Blackwell and Hildreth, they want to keep getting on with it, but they're going to have to spend a little bit of time just seeing how the pitch plays and getting settled. Snape starting his third. Oh! oh! Is he bowled him round his legs? I think he has! All of a sudden, the Somerset Sabres are in complete nutter tatters. Snape's magic is working. The Foxes are going on here. 98 for four. Real quality bowling from Jeremy Snape. The over before, he took all the pace off it. This first delivery of this over, he's pushed it through, pushed it through quickly, realised Blackwell, or thought Blackwell was going to try to sweep, try and get it down for one and just keep the scoreboard ticking, and he's fired it up under and round his legs. That is a huge wicket. Blackwell goes for one. The Sabres now 98 for four. Three for nine in seven balls. Well, Jeremy Snape. Can you believe the way this game's turned round? Yeah. Jeremy, can you hear me? Yeah. Turned round interestingly now. Oh, we just had a little bit of a change, haven't we? Taking the pace off a little bit more. It's hard All when you first come in. The big guns are done and dusted. Yeah, but Parsons is a good cricketer, so we've just got to keep going. <laughs> yeah. Ian, Jeremy Snape's absolutely right. These two, we saw them do it in a game earlier in the season, Hildreth and Parsons. Parsons knows what he's doing. He'll just knock it about, work the singles, allow Hildreth to get in, and then they'll have a blitz for the last five, maybe. Maybe, but at the minute, Jeremy Snape has got the ball on a piece of string, taking the pace off it, pushing it through, changing his length. Pushes that one through. This is quality bowling. Four deliveries gone, no run scored. One wicket taken. The variety is the key here. Absolutely brilliant thinking from Jeremy Snape. It is not going to be easy for these two to keep ticking the ball over, to keep ticking it into gaps. Again, another dot ball. That's five on the trot. This is brilliant bowling. Again, a change of pace. 60 miles an hour, that delivery. But the flight thrown up, changing it all the time. It's the first maiden of the day, and it's a wicket maiden as well to Snape. He's got one more to go, three overs, one maiden, one for 13, and the Foxes fans are in ecstasy.
He's enjoying it. He's very pleased with that performance from Jeremy Snape. Absolutely outstanding, real clever one-day bowling. And I think he knows he's bowled a beauty. You can see from the smile on his face, his teammates are running up from all parts to congratulate him. Ball back on him here, come on. Here comes Mongia, starting his second. Good TV. It was Mongia's last over, which really started it all when he picked up the two wickets, the run out, and then for Scothic. Oh, good stop. Not sure whether it was a caught and bowl chance. I think that would probably be a bit unkind to Dinesh if it was. I think that's save four. Well, Hildreth's gone big, but has he gone big enough? It's just bounced inside and gone for four. Good shot under the circumstances. He's a wonderful timer of the ball, Hildreth. Really plugged this one, it went very, very high. But as you say, Charles, just dropping short of the six, but a priceless boundary. The pressure really on these two batsmen. I have to say it was a good shot, but a bit of a punt from Hildreth. Could be trouble, or is it going to fall safely? Gibson, oh no, there we are! Dennis Mongia dropped an absolute gooper just a moment or two ago, but he's pulled off a brilliant one. Well, that was nearly a four way collision. That could have been really, really nasty. Dennis Mongia, as you said, dropped an absolute goober about two overs ago, but he's held one of the most difficult catches you ever get on a cricket field that is running back, catching the ball over your head. He's bowled the delivery, Hildreth's gone for the boundary, it's gone high really high. Monge's now had to spin round, sprint after it, over his shoulder. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Notice Gibson nearly cleaned him out as well, and there was somebody else converging as well. <laughs> what a catch. Four for 13, the collapse in 17 balls. Hildreth gone for four, and you'd have to say, James Hildreth, that that probably wasn't the brightest piece of cricket at that moment. He got away with a big one earlier on. Did he really need to go for it there? Well, I applauded him when he hit the boundary, the couple of balls before, but I did say he took a punt, and I think he took a punt a little bit, well, one too many, to be honest. Really has put his side under pressure. Durston is the new batsman. Parsons will continue to play his shots. That's going to be four. So another dramatic over, eight off it, but another wicket, 14 overs gone, it's 106 for five. And six for five. Problems for Somerset. Snape starting his final over. Change in the commentary box. Here are Robert and Dave. Thanks, Charles. Well, here we are. The holders playing good, strong cricket. Canny cricket. Jeremy Snape. Holding his last over. Look at his figures. One for 14. He's done well. He's looked at the conditions. We spoke to him earlier. Thought in his feet. Now he's fought, thought, found the best method to be successful on this wicket. Crazy! Be a couple here. Yeah, he's hit his spinners, but not massive spin. I think he's changed his pace well. Mongia also has picked up a couple of wickets, two for 18. And you can't say that, oh, it's a big spinning pitch. I don't think he's going to be. No, he's used flight, doesn't he? He's used what uh, a lot of old-time spinners would do. The pitch didn't suit for for sideways turn, and they try and do the batsman in the air, and um, he thinks in his feet he uses different paces well. He never lets the batsman settle. Variation is good, um, and he feels very well off his own bowling. And, you know, as far as 2020 cricket is concerned, he's the ideal type of spinner to have in your side. It's good when you've got a couple of spinners who've nipped out three. Not going for too many either. Oh, yeah. There's that pace off the ball again. 
It's just gentle, isn't it? Moon ball thrown up into the air. Now then, Somerset really need to regroup, give themselves... find a partnership from somewhere, give themselves the best opportunity to launch an assault in the last three overs. At the moment, they've been scuppered a little bit by the Leicestershire team who've, who've had a good clutch of wickets just when Somerset were getting on top. We might get scuppered as well with the weather, it doesn't look too good. Just before we go, Jim. A massive shower coming across the ground. Snape again. Well, we talked about change of pace. Look at that, 61 miles an hour. That's the end of Snape. Four overs, two for 18. A tremendous bit of bowling here from Jeremy Snape. You've got to admire that as a fellow off spinner and everybody watching. He's bowled a ball in the mid 40s, the ball before, and that one was up to 61.8. An arm ball that just drifts into Midland off. And isn't he happy? Look at him. He looks like a little elf smiling away. Well, it's excellent bowling. Dangerous player, Keith Parsons. He's gone for seven. 111 for six. Somerset, fancied team. Well, I've got to say that I fancied them, but it's Leicestershire again. And they just breeze in here. They're in the finals. Nobody talks about them, but they are the holders. Here we go. You can see all the different styles of delivery that he bowls, all different paces. And all different lengths and you can see the variation as a batsman is difficult to get the get terms it. with you can't set yourself to hit boundaries so that's the that's the the style that an off spinner will use when the ball isn't turning well he shows it perfectly that it's not a spinning pitch but it's variation of pace well really well four overs two for 18. So there's been some damage to Somerset here, 113 for six. They've got to get themselves together in this last five overs, give the bowlers something to aim at, something to bowl at. If they can get up to 150. Seven down then, Denny. Come on, Denny, seven now. Oh! You and me, Denny, you and me, pal. Come on, Denny. Jeremy David Lloyd up here, quick hi, word. Hi, Bum. Great piece of bowling, mate. Thanks, mate. Just change of pace, Jeremy, nothing more. He's not spinning, is it? Well, a couple just grip, but I just felt it was just the slower ball for the new batsman was harder to get away. They want, they want pace on the ball. They're just a little bit nervous here, the Somerset guys. We just take the pace off the ball, they're searching for it a little bit, they want the pace to, to use and hit boundaries, but if you take the pace off and it just grips a little bit, it's hard work and we've been fortunate on this occasion. It's a big shot again, out into the deep, one bounce, four. End of the 16th over, 119 for six. Yeah, this is where Leicestershire have to stay on the metal here. They take, they've had a great period in the middle of the innings, taking some crucial wickets, but they can't relax, they can't let Somerset regroup and get a partnership here. They have to keep, keep their foot on the pedal and stay on top of them. I think also when Jeremy Snape said there, he could feel, or they can feel, Leicestershire, that Somerset are nervous, they're feeling for the ball, they're reaching for the ball. It's Leicestershire who are the holders, they've been into these finals. And Somerset, uh, with all those big shots, Graham Smith, Matthew Wood, Marcus Truscothic, Ian Blackwell, James Hildreth, Keith Parson, all marvellous players in one day, and particularly 2020 cricket. Henderson comes back into the attack. Oh, he hasn't bowled as yet, so it's, 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 it's... And again, it's left arm spin, so there's that method, isn't there, of bowling spinners? Yes, definitely. It was what we saw last year when they were in the finals as well. They've got a method, they've got a plan, and they stick to it. And in fairness, Henderson bowls generally well at the death. Gives it a flip, and that's down the leg side, and it's wide. Up! Up! The three to the total. Henderson starts with a wide, a drifting wide down the leg side. I'm just looking at this projected score. Nine and over gets 158.
need some boundaries, don't they? Yeah, definitely. For me, they need to get up to 1-5-2 if they've got any, any chance of winning against this Leicestershire team. To be competitive, they need a good total. They need for their psychological side of it. They need to know that when they're walking out there, they've got 150 under the belt. They don't really be, want to be walking out there with 130, 140. Well, there's a difference from that to the first semi-final, Lancashire. With all the arrogance and the skill that they've got, 217. This is different. Somerset 124 for six. We have had showers. I just don't think that showers have affected the surface, though. Good, Jimmy. That's the clue to me that Jeremy Snape out there has said that they seem to be nervous. Look, a nervous team, Somerset. Seven down, lads. Somerset, 127 for six, but slightly worried. Somerset batted first, won the toss, batted first. Get it, put it yes, mate. Terrific fielding from Mongia there. 129 for six after 17. 14 fours and two sixes in this 129. I still think that they might just get themselves up to 150. Three, three overs are left. Now, what are they talking about here? It'll be about some sort of partnership. Partnership 18 from 12 deliveries. And I should think they'll be saying, target score, we've got to get to 150. Darren Maddy comes into the attack. Yeah, boundary, boundary early on is what a lot of batsmen target. Darren Maddy will be the type of bowler now. He'll angle the ball in, full around middle and leg stump, not looking to give the batsman room, hit over the offside. He's a smart bowler. A little bit surprised at the keeper standing back. He's usually a wicket-to-wicket -wicket bowler, and again, at medium pace, he'll try and take the pace off the ball with slow good deliveries. Good boundaries, got to find some boundaries. Good, does. Your slow ball, pal. Your slow is, does. This stage, Batsman's got to pick an area where he thinks he can hit the boundary and then improvise if it's not in that slot. It's boiling, it's boiling up here. The Somerset guys know that they need a boundary. The Leicestershire guys know that there's an opportunity going to come. Oh! Big appeal. Not out, says John Holder. Darren Maddy thinks it's out, Paul Nixon thinks it's out. I reckon this has brushed his trousers at the top of the pads. Yeah, his pocket, just that. Right hand back, pocket. Back Come on. In the old days, Dave, the uh, wicket keeper would have seen that and said, No, I'm not appealing for that, wouldn't he? Some would, some wouldn't. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Whipped into the leg side. Who would? Oh, I can't name names. I'm, I'm just not going there. Really not. You've got, an, you've got a wicket keeper sat next to you, umpire. Char Sharpie wouldn't have appealed for that. Definitely not. Oh, that's a nick. The old count. Sort of luck you need at this stage. It hasn't been easy to come by boundaries, but he's hit the toe of the bat there. Perhaps if Nixon had been standing back, we'd have had a catch, but no, he's committed. He's up to the stumps. He's trying to stop the batsman coming down the wicket. Toe end, four runs. You said you couldn't understand why the wicketkeeper was stood back. Now he's stood up, you want him back. Where do you want him? In the middle. <laughs> <laughs> he's come back up. Catch it! Spin! 
should just be a single. 137 for six. Hundred and thirty seven for six after eighteen overs. Somerset winning the toss, batting first. It's been difficult, hard work. It's Leicestershire who's shown all that know how that you expect and team effort, team spirit. Lots of spin bowlers used. Dinesh Mongia with three overs, two for twenty six, starts his last over. Smart cricket taking pace off the ball. I do think, though, that the rain has started to scar this pitch up quite a bit, where the people are crossing along, where they're turning and going for the second run. And as we can see, I think the, the spinners are going to come more and more into the game. Good change of pace again from Mongia, using all his experience, not letting the batsman settle, because you can feel the fact that Somerset are building. They've got to get boundaries from somewhere. They've got to get themselves up to 150-plus to give them a, a reasonable chance of winning. In the air, the catcher underneath it. He's gone. Safe hands. Dinesh Mongia finished up with the three wickets, or he's got three wickets so far. Jim Allenby out there at long off. Gets rid of West Durston. Yeah, again, ties him up over middle and leg. Gives himself some room. Doesn't catch it in the sweet spot of the bat. Alan B moves in, takes the catch. An easy wicket, really. A cheap wicket in some ways, but Somerset have to put the gas down. Average score now on this ground with the game this morning is 166. Batting first. 139 for seven with nine deliveries still to go. I doubt whether they're going to get up to that average score, but they need 150. Somerset just to give themselves something to bowl at. Coming back for two. Tight, tight, oh! over the hit. Let's have a look at this. Peter Willey wants a decision from the third umpire, but it's a direct hit. That usually means curtains. Superb work from Gibson down at long on. He's got a good arm. He's moved quickly to the ball. Just knows that direct hits in our experience suggest that very, very close, and here he comes in, direct hit, and he's gone. Third umpire's decision, well, anybody can do it, we can all see. Third umpire will relay the decision out to the middle to Peter Willey, and the batsman is a good yard out. Richard Johnson is the batsman, and he's going to find out that he is on the way back, and he is. 139. 40 for eight is the score now, and they seem to be in some sort of trouble here. Richard Johnson with that long walk back without scoring, run out without scoring. Direct hit, it's a good piece of fielding, wasn't it? Otis Gibson. He was on the mark, he was focused, he was with the game. He claimed the run out for his side. 140 for eight. Gaza. Can they get to 150? I just think it's a landmark <laughs> score. If you get to 150 and you've batted first, the nerves are then on the team coming in second. Well, it's Leicestershire, do they have nerves? They don't appear to have. They're playing like a side who's obviously been here before, and Somerset are playing like a side that it's the first time they've appeared in the finals. Very similar as we played last year, we were a little bit edgy. Um, it was as if the game had passed us by before, the, before we'd realised we were in a match. And I sense this is the way that Somerset are feeling now. 141 for eight after 19 overs. But you can settle into the game as well. You just say at the interval, OK, that's the runs that we've got. We would have liked a few more, but let's defend that. Let's see what they've got. They've played good cricket of Leicestershire so far. That's Somerset's card. And they've got stars, haven't they? Smith, Wood, Truscothic, Durston have all got stars, but they've not got that big innings. Last over. Otis Gibson will bowl this last over. 
Spinners have done well, look there. Henderson's just bowled that one over, but Jeremy Snake, two for 18 in four. Dinesh Mongia, three for 30 in his four overs. Gibson, the other wicket taker, comes back for this last over. Gibson, three overs, one for 24. Brilliant piece of fielding, that really was. Big solid shot down the ground, brings a boundary, they need it. That's the choice the captain has to make. Does he leave long off back and bring fine leg into the circle? This time round he brought mid off up. Fine leg was back and that's the area. Gazard has pecked and gone for four. Tremendous strike down the wicket. Just back of length from a Yorker gives him enough room to lever the bat through. Drop his length back here, Ortiz Gibson, not just his fault. There he goes. Bowling that length ball and a half volley, if you like, with his mid off inside the circle. He's asking for trouble, so a word in his ear. I think the captain has said just hit back of a length if you can. We've got a fine leg. I think I'd fancy it the other way around, Dave, to be honest with you from here. I think I'd I'd back the fact that I'd ask my bowler to bowl a Yorker length, leave a long off and bring fine leg up. another boundary these are good runs I know that I said earlier that Somerset would say at the interval well, we should have got more we could have got more but that's what we've got now we've got to defend it I think from about five overs in they were looking for 150 they're going to get there they've got three more deliveries 149 for 80 is the score we've done it now fine leg inside the circle long off I think we all also have to remember with the Somerset team they've got three international seam bowlers as well so you, they could really come to the fore this time round, take out early wickets, and that 150-odd could feel like 180-odd. Oh, that's a big shot, and we've talked about good runs and vital runs. 150 is on the board, and they've still got two deliveries. Good cricket from Gazard, yeah. Intelligent play. He realises that Gibson is going to go for the full-length delivery. He moves across the crease basically fetches it over to his side, over the mid-wicket for four runs. Tremendous shot there. Now then, another change in the field. No third man this time. Leicestershire are looking to plug that gap at mid-wicket. What do you think here, slower ball? Yeah, with third man up, do you fancy the slower ball? Good Yorker. Look where it's gone, fine leg. Well, you take your chance, bring fine leg up if you're marginally offline and the batsman gets lucky, that's what happens. If it doesn't go straight to him, what a good over this is, 16 from him. He's done brilliantly well, Gazard, here for a young man coming to the team. This is a spot-on delivery, and he just gets the under edge on it, goes down for four runs. Who'd, who'd want to be a bowler in this situation? Well, he's dancing away as well with his feet, gets the ball away. Last ball, big shot again, anybody under it? Yes, there is. Oh, what another great catch. Claude Henderson ends this innings. They've caught well of Leicestershire at vital times. That might not be a vital time, the last delivery of the 20 overs, but they've got themselves up to 157 for nine. Makes good distance to this Henderson. He's a big man, gets his legs going well, arms out in front of him, takes a comfortable catch in the end and a bit of an acrobatic yeah. dive for the crowd. Well, do they fancy it? Somerset 157 for nine. They were 89 for one and subsided to 111 for six. That collapse was five for 22, but a recovery at the end. Carl Gazard with 26 from 19 deliveries have got what I think to be a decent score, 157 for nine. From the bowling department, Otis Gibson took two wickets. Willoughby came out and impressed early on, but it was the spinners who did a great job here, taking five wickets between them, especially Jeremy Snape, a fine performance from the off-spinner. Leicestershire need 158 to, to win at 7.9 per over. Thank you, Charles. 158 for the Leicestershire Foxes to progress to the 2020 final of 2005.
H.D. Ackerman, the captain of the Leicestershire Foxes, is opening the batting, 32 years old. His hero is Steve Waugh. It's a bit of Maroon 5 and plays golf. He will be taking strike at the Vauxhall end. He'll be facing Andrew Caddock. Bags of experience, bags of height too. Six foot five year and 36 years old for Andrew Caddock. Nine matches in his 2020 Cup career. High economy rate and just the five wickets, but this might be a pitch that will suit Andy Caddock. There's a little bit of bounce. The moisture has been falling for a, on and off for a while here at the Oval. It might just have juiced up the pitch. Here goes Caddock. And he's spot on the mark. Two catches for Andy Caddick. First and second slip, the obligatory catches. He has no fine leg. He has a third man and a deep backward point. So Caddick will have to watch his line early on. Very much an offside fill. Two men only on the leg side. So with this field, David, he's got to hold his line, hasn't he? Well, just looking at this leg side field. Only two fielders, leg side. He's got to be absolutely bang on off stump. He's got his two slips in there, so he's got his catches. And, and you said it, that if, if there's any sort of moisture in this surface, he'll find it. We've just had showers. I doubt whether there will be, to be honest. Ackerman's away. Right. He fell on the boundary, keeps it to one. And that brings Darren Maddy on to strike. Very fine player in all forms of the game, but he seems to have taken to 2020 cricket in particular. 22 matches, 700 runs, average of 35, and a good strike rate. He's one of the very few batsmen who have gone on to score 100. Good statistics from Darren Maddy. has found his length, that's for sure. Maddy's such a prolific scorer in this. Where are his strengths? Well, it's width. He likes width, doesn't he? Offside width. So I imagine that is why, certainly to Maddy, although they have done it to Ackerman, they've got that man on the far left of your screen over by those wickets. There he is. Well, that man you would usually associate with being a fine leg. Caddick is bowling without a fine leg. He's got extra protection on the offside. Deep backward point and a third man. Just a hint of swing for Andrew Caddick. Maddie looking to use his feet, get to the pitch of the ball. Not easy against a bowler who's six and a half feet. Just that hint of swing from Caddick. It's an excellent start from Caddick, is this. You just have, sometimes you have gut feelings that they worked so hard, Somerset, to get to 157, propelled in that last over. And they've got the firepower, they've got the bowlers. Did swing. Peel for an LBW, but that was sliding down the leg side. Good over from Caddick, just one run coming from the first over. Leicestershire Fox has won without loss. It was a dangerous ploy. He went for the full ball, David, without a fine leg. Well, that's the best over that we've seen so far on finals day here. Caddick with the new ball sets the tone. He gets the field with only two fielders leg side. His discipline has got to be bang on. His pace looks good as well, Andrew Caddick. It'll be good to see Graham Smith also marshal this team. I should think he dearly wants to win this game. He wants to get into a final. He's a very aggressive captain. He's got Charles Langefeld as an opening partner for Andrew Caddick. He's got Richard Johnson maybe as first change. Here he goes, Graham Smith. Sky viewers will know a little bit about Charles Langefeld's international career. He took a hat-trick, if you remember, live on Sky Sports against the West Indies from Barbados. Two matches for Langefeld in his 2020 career. Took five for against England last winter as well. Good shot from Ackerman, but again, Graham Smith setting the same field. So no fine leg, just a third man. And a cover on the boundary. So again, Langefeld is going to have to keep his lines tight. Just the two men on the leg side. 
Two slips catching. No fine leg. Free hit. Front foot, no ball is a free hit. So, Sean Langefeld over stepping the mark. And this has given Darren Maddy an opportunity to launch a shot with impunity. You cannot be out off a free hit. Well, that's not strictly true. You can be run out. You can't be caught, bowled, LBW. All well, that's taken out the equation. So a discussion now between bowler and captain. Do you want to change the field? The answer is yes. Still got one slip. And Marcus Triscothic, who was at second slip, has gone to a very, very short gully. Gets away with it. Gets away with it. It was nearly in the slot, wasn't it? No fine leg. Oh, it's a damp squib, isn't it? Ball and all ball on the front foot, so therefore it's a free hit and all sorts racing through your mind. What will it be? Full length, short ball. Need to get bat on it, he didn't. Darren Maddy. Graham, David Lloyd up here, com box. Graham, it's David Lloyd up here, com box. David, how are you? Man? I'm all right, thanks. It's a big game for you guys. Sorry, I'm big, lost. It's a big game for you guys. It is, and we, uh, we let ourselves down a little bit with a bat, maybe the young guys, a bit of occasion, you know, got to them. Uh, I thought their spinners bowled well. But, uh, you know, it's time for our bowlers to pull us out here in this competition, and a few wickets up front will do that for us. Be a couple here uh, to mid-wicket. Graham, David Lloyd again. David. So you reckon that 157, it could have been more, but you've got to defend it and you've got a tasty attack. Yeah, I think the important thing is to forget about the first semi-final where both scores were around 200, 157 is what we've got to, we've got to make of it. And these two up front, it be nice for us to get a few early wickets here and build a bit of pressure from there. Well, you mentioned those spinners, David, for the Leicestershire Foxes. Snape, Mongia and Henderson were the three spinners used. Their combined figures, nine overs, one maiden, five wickets for 58 runs. A game plan that worked to take the pace off ball, plenty of spin. I'm not sure that Somerset have got that option. It's a different sort of attack, isn't it? Blackwell will ball spin, maybe a little bit of Graham Smith himself. But the pace attack is more than useful. End of the second over, seven without loss for the Foxes. Charles, where are you? Well, I'm down by the dugout. I'm not with either of the uh, sides that are playing in this particular game, but uh, with Mal Loy of uh, the Lancashire Lightning. So what are the Lightning doing as you try and work out who you're going to be playing? Uh, the rest of the lads are just up in the changing room, just lying and watching, watching the game, uh, except for, I think, Corky. Corky's gone back to the hotel, but he likes to be different. You know, so. Well, that'd be right with Corky, wouldn't he? He'd need to go home and have a lie down, I expect. But uh, what do you make of... This game, well, first of all, has the excitement died down after winning against Surrey? It's taken about an hour, honestly. I was talking to Warren Hegg out there, he's playing all those finals in the 90s, and he says he's never known be so tense and nervous as, as he has been today. So, it's, yeah, just come down. You weren't worried at all, though, seriously, were you, when you had to get 200 and defending 217? No, the way Rams was going in the mood, there was a stage where I thought, oh, no, this is it, another semi-final, we're going to lose here. But, no, thankfully, I think the crucial over was when Jimmy bowled that great over and, and got the wicket of the mood. Right, now, what do you reckon to this one? Because this one is nowhere near as high a scoring game as your semi-final. I've got a funny feeling Somerset are going to win. I don't know what it is. They've got nearly 160, and I think it's, it's, you know, it's a defendable total. So, uh, I've just got a funny feeling. And who would you least prefer to face in the final? I don't mind, really, and everyone says that. I don't really mind. We have beaten um, Leicester in, in, the, in the group stages, so I would probably feel a bit more confident. We know what they do and how they go about it, but uh, I don't really mind, to be honest. All right. Uh, we just, well, the well, thing I think everybody hopes is that we just get it through tonight, don't we? Yeah, looking at the cloud, I think it's, you might get the odd shower, but I think, I think we're going to go well tonight. OK, Mal, well, uh, go and rest up a bit more and we'll uh, see you in the final. Hey, just before you go, actually, I just wanted to ask you one other quick thing about that absolutely massive six you hit. It was enormous. 
And I was just saying, it was the first one, I, it was the only one I really, really timed. Yeah, it was, I got it out, out the screws and with the pace of Mahmood as well, it, you know, it just went down the street there by... Uh, <laughs> Have they got it back? I don't know. I don't know. I just, the, the worst thing was they brought out a new, new ball, but <laughs> never mind. All right, good to see you. Enjoy the final, won't you? Cheers, Charles. OK, back upstairs. Thank you, Charles. Didn't he play well? Mal Loy opening up with Stuart Law in the first semi-final. Missfield. Can't afford it. Johnson is herring back after it. Will he get it back before the boundary gingerly? Fielding has to be red hot in the 2020. Richard Johnson with bags of experience in cricket in general, but he's been unbelievably making his 2020 debut. Oh dear, like hamstring. There's that handful of fresh air again. Run out without facing a ball. Fair to say, perhaps hasn't gone his way just yet. Well, he's got a ball, probably four overs. No! This is good stuff from Caddick. Now, we're talking about that big six, Malloy there with Charles Colville. This is it. Slap. That's way, way, it's out of the ground, it's gone. Well, it's gone down the road. It's an extraordinary shot. It takes such commitment, such skill and such bravery to sweep a bowler who's bowling mid-80 mile an hour with a new ball. Incredible. He does it regularly, Malachi Lloyd. But no fine leg, that's the danger. If Caddick doesn't get his line spot on, it is an easy boundary, not just an easy run, an easy boundary. And he's played for that too. H.D. Ackerman just got himself across to the offside, rolls his wrist. Just knowing that there isn't a fine leg in there and it's just slightly angled down the leg side. Well, these white balls don't swing for very long either. So when Caddick was opening up with a brand new ball, he just got a hint of a way swing, which helped him keep that off stump line. As soon as that ball stops swinging, it's angling into the pads. High, up and over the slip region, up and over Triscothic. That's gone for four. I'm sure Somerset will see Darren Maddy as the wicket. He put enormous pressure on the rest of the Leicestershire team if the kingpin star man is dismissed early, but he looks to be well into his stride. 14 from 14, he's had the majority of the strike. Darren Maddy, two fours. It wasn't a bad delivery from Phil Langerfeld. Just outside off stump. And he's so strong with the cut shot. Yeah, if, if Charles Langerfeld doesn't know what his strength is, that's it. He's waiting for that, a real bottom hand player. And he'll be kicking himself that he misses out there. He doesn't usually, Darren Maddy. Still kept this same field, it hasn't changed. The ball into a plant. Just a straight mid wicket and a mid on. There's no behind him down there at fine leg, no. Just two fielders, leg side. Great shot from Darren Maddy. Not quite a Malachi Loy slap out of the ground, but it was out of the same mould. A couple of bounces and it's into the boundary board. Fox is a canny. Holders of the trophy. Maddy just picks up that length. I think it's great for these players that these, well, this pitch is absolutely brilliant for playing shots and confidence. It's great for cricket all round. The batsmen can certainly trust it, but the bowlers can get a little bit of bounce. We've seen Jeremy Snape bowl exceptionally well on this wicket. And he's just another one down to the third man region, and that'll race away for four. So three boundaries from the first four deliveries from Charles Langefeld, and Maddie is just edging into the groove. Well, it's funny how overs develop into damage. This one's gone four dot ball, four, four. That's the last one. So you get itchy as a fielding side. You're inside this six over fielding restriction. There's not a lot that he can do. Graham Smith. He's still got his two slips in there. And now he's gone for four. Caddick will not catch that. It will race across the square, race across those net areas. He will not catch that. And that is the fourth boundary of the over. So what do you do as a fielding side now? You've got a, 
a field that is set, you've talked about it, you've planned it in the dressing room, and then you get that delivery. Got to adapt, got to be able to adapt in 2020, and I think it's time for Graham Smith just to change things round, perhaps a bit more orthodox, maybe get a fine leg in, maybe get one of those slips on the drive, and allow his bowlers to bowl a little bit straighter, particularly at Darren Maddy. Fumble by Blackwell on the third man boundary, 18 off the over. 36 without loss. Leicestershire, 36 without loss from four overs. Here comes Caddick from the pavilion end. Right on the money. Has changed his field slightly here, Andrew Caddick. Slip has gone from second slip to a wider gully. This is the state of the game so far. Somerset Savers, 157 for nine. He would top scoring with 38. The spinners did the damage. One gear three for 30. Jeremy Snake was quite outstanding. Two for 18. And Leicester 36 without loss in reply. 122 runs needed from 15.5 overs. Just a bit of bounce for Andrew Carrick. You will get that here at the oval. It's not a blisteringly quick wicket. It's not Perth. It's not the Wacker. But it's consistent bounce. Changes in this field, it's still the same. There's two on the leg side. Wicket keeper Gazard is trying desperately to lift his team. He just feels he can sense from his position one, the ball's not swinging, two, that Leicester are just getting away. Safe, lucky but safe. Chipped right in between two fielders. Wasn't in control of that Ackerman, but he's got away with it and he's scampered up the other end, away from the danger zone. Well, we've got two South African captains, H.D. Ackerman for Leicester Foxes, Graham Smith for Somerset Sabres. He shortly goes back, Graham Smith, doesn't he? He finishes his stint. Great shot. Well, we saw a wonderful effort from Darren Maddy in the previous over, but that's gone that little bit better. He got four the previous over, he's got a flat six to his name off Andrew Caddick. Well, how do they do that, Des? Just demolished the fella's pint here. <laughs> Back to the bar, sir. Your round. It's probably queued up, I don't know how long to get that. <laughs> Great shot, wonderful cricket shot, racing away, will Smith be able to cut it off? Yes he will, he's athletic and he's quick. Blackwell does the follow-up, that's a nice shot from Darren Maddy. proper cricket shot. Ten from the over so far. Maddy's 37 from 21, he's had all the strikes. H.D. Ackerman has only faced nine deliveries. Part of the plan. And again, a simple tuck down a fine leg. No fine leg. Wrong line from Caddick. Deft touch from Ackerman and another boundary. And that's the 50 up from just five overs. What a start for the Foxes. Leg side's leaking. This plan has been set and bowlers are drifting down the leg side. It needs nothing more than a nick and a nudge. No fielder down there at fine leg. 50 on the board, going at 10 and over. Well, what a terrific day this is. Full house at the Brit Oval. We've got a decent day, sun keeps peeping through. Crowd are very happy, they're lively. Lots of youngsters here as well. Three games of cricket in one day. They don't look too happy, do they? Did you see them big boys there? They were probably going on your tips for the mascot derby. You let them down, they'll be after you afterwards, you know that. Darren Maddy is starting to ease through the gears here. That's a wonderful shot. Caught it on the full toss and he's flipped Richard Johnson's first delivery for four. I'll tell you what, he ended easing through this leg side. There's another, so many runs have been scored. 
on the leg side. They will change it right now. Will they change it right now? Andrew Caddick is dropping back to deep mid-wicket. Second slip. Comes into a catching position. Short mid-wicket. Side again from Johnson. This time just a single because Caddick has been pushed out onto that leg side. Just think it's a big risk now with the ball not swinging away from the right handers for Somerset to continue with this policy of bowling without a fine leg. Johnson, 30 years of age, six foot two, making his debut. To re emphasize that, an experienced cricketer, but not in this form of the game. It looks to me like he's changed his style here, Johnson. Come he's on, looking then, to bowl Yorkers, which is not a bad thing when they're going at sort of eight, ten runs and over. But if you're bowling Yorkers, do you need extra protection? Do you need a different feel? Well, certainly you, you spotlight this leg side and Richard Johnson coming back after injuries, troublesome injuries. There's that open face again from Maddy. Moves on to 43. Richard Johnson's always his reputation is a hit the pitch ball at, at decent pace. I think he's just easing back in into cricket. I would have thought that his pace is uh, under 80 miles an hour. Two more deliveries before fielding restrictions are lifted. Seizing himself back into it, Richard Johnson. Career blighted by injury. Was selected to tour South Africa, I believe, years and years ago, back in 1995. When he was still playing for Middlesex. Back injury, stress fracture of the back, blighted his attempt to get on that flight. Has played for England since then. Keeps breaking down, which is such a shame. Lovely shot. Lovely shot. Maddie's had most of the strike. He's been playing most of the shots. Ackerman has only played, well, he's only faced 13 deliveries, and he's eased one through the offside for a sparkling boundary. Well, you see these big shots, massive shots that clear the boundaries, and then you get finesse from Darren Maddie as he just leans on this. HD Ackerman correction as he just eases this through the offside, through extra cover. We see some massive shots, but HD Ackerman there is playing real good cricket shot. I think all sorts of things are dispelled about 2020 cricket. Oh, it's a game for sloggers, not a bit of it. You've got to think on your feet, you've got to be really wide awake tactically. It's a game for cool heads as much as anything. Has Ian Blackwell got that cool head on his shoulders today? Big player for Somerset, 18 games for Blackwell. Getting in with the bat, he was outfoxed by Jeremy Snape. He's a very useful one-day performer with the ball. He's going to start over the wicket, left arm over the wicket. 61 without loss from six. Surrey and Lancashire in the first semi-final. Lancashire going on to make 217. We're both 63 without loss after six, so... Shows you how good the Foxes have started. And how they're continuing. Another boundary to Maddy. He's gone to 47 and he's grabbing this semi-final at the moment by the scruff of the neck. All the talk before the games were watch Maddy. Maddy's the kingpin player for Leicester Foxes. Get him early and the rest will fall. That's not happened. Ackerman has stood at the other end and just admired. You can block as well, just okay. Decent delivery, I'll just knock it back. Another boundary, slightly fortunate this time. A thick top edge, it's gone over the top of Andy Caddick for four, and Maddie has gone to 50 from just 27 deliveries. Second 50 this year for Darren Maddie, his sixth in his career of 2020 cricket and it's come at a priceless time in the semi-final against Somerset. And these are not tickles, these sweeps. Almost plays them one-handed. On, it's 
getting big overs, isn't it? Again, this uh, Ian Blackwell comes into the attack. He's gone for nine already. He's raced away, Darren Maddy. 52 from 28 deliveries. Eight fours, one six. Nicely played by Ackerman. No frills, no risk. Simple single into the outfield. He knows that they're playing well. He knows particularly his partner, Darren Maddy, is on fire. He's quite happy to give him the strike. And Maddy has dominated the strike. Ackerman's face 14 deliveries, Maddy 28. Slight change in the field. And straight with wicket. It's just come a little bit squarer. Finishes the seventh over with a dot ball. 71 without loss, the Leicestershire Foxes in pursuit of 158 to win. Darren Maddy's second 50 in 2020 cricket this year. And it's been quite an exemplary way of playing this form of the game. Eight fours and a six. A couple of slog sweeps a la Maliki Lloyd. One that went all the way for six. There it goes. Boom. Didn't move. Knew he'd got it. And it went a long, long way. Richard Johnson's first ball he was flipped away for four and a couple of sweeps of Ian Blackwell. Maddie, 52 not out from 29 deliveries. And he has scored predominantly on the leg side. Nothing much in front of square on the offside. Big areas down square leg and down to fine leg. And he's taken advantage. So it's only one without loss. We're going to have a change up here in the commentary box as we have a change out on the field as Keith Parsons come on to the bowl. Robert Croft is with Charles Cole. Thanks a lot, Ian. So, the Richard Johnson experiment didn't last very long, and uh, you get the feeling that uh, Graham Smith and Somerset are rather clutching at straws here. They have to do something to break this partnership. If they don't do it in a hurry, their history. And it'll be Leicestershire through to their second final in two years. I said to Nasser at half time that I thought that where Leicestershire had done it so well was in having their spinners who took the pace off the ball. And we haven't seen anything of that bar the one over from Blackwell so far in this uh, Somerset Sabres bowling effort. Yeah, they haven't been allowed to get into the attack, have they? In fairness, Maddy has come out and played a superb knock. 52 not out at the moment. And Ackerman, together, they've put a, a great partnership together. Haven't let the Somerset side settle into any sort of rhythm, get any sort of momentum going or put any pressure on the Leicestershire team. And in fairness, they're going about their business very well, the Leicestershire side. It was interesting something that you said earlier on in the day, that your memory of the semi-final last year was that it was over before you'd really turned up and you felt that you'd been ambushed. I just think that maybe Leicestershire are ambushing Somerset here. I think so. You're spot on there from my own personal experience uh, with the Glamorgan team last year. It was sort of 15 overs into the game before we realised the game had started. And in fairness, from this point where we're watching, I think that Somerset have taken a similar sort of route that we did. Leicestershire have come in, they're the most streetwise side. Uh, they've got the experience of lifting the cup, and certainly they're playing at the top of their game at the moment. Well, almost a court and bowl chance. You've got to take your hat off as well to uh, Hilton Ackerman, who's just quietly going about his business, while Maddy is uh, cutting loose and playing all the shots at the other end. Ackerman, 19 off 17 balls, three fours, now just into uh, get one, get Maddy back onto strike mode. Well, that's good communication. You've got two experienced cricketers out there going about their business. They've identified each other's role within the innings and they're playing to it. And this is good cricket to watch from a Leicestershire okay. point of view, uh, but not so good from Somerset point of view. At the outset, on, come on, guys. Come Leicestershire on. needed to score at uh, just under eight and over. It's now under seven and over. Well, just three off that over, so that's a good one from Parsons. 74 without loss, the Foxes.
Well, at the moment, you'd have to say the Foxes are on course. They need 84 runs to win it off 72 balls. It's interesting, of course, if this was a tote sport league game, you think, well, oh, that's quite a stiff chase. But they have got 10 wickets in hand, and this is 2020, so attitudes are very different. But the thing is, Robert, it only takes just a one moment of brilliance, just a little something to happen for the Somerset Sabres, and they'll be back in this game. Like that for a start. That's the end of Ackerman. Blackwell's got past the rather tentative frog. First ball round the wicket from Blackwell. And the Somerset Sabres have got their first wicket. Yeah, as Blackwell opened the door, terrific bit of bowling. Pitches around the wicket, it turns, that's more important. Batsman's a long way down and the keeper takes the, the bails off. Terrific bit of bowling from the, the Somerset left arm spinner. As he's just opened the door for Somerset to get back into this game. 74 for one, Leicestershire Foxes, Ackerman is gone for 19. Just to uh, underline what we're saying about the way these games can change, here comes Dinesh Mongia, from 89 for one, Somerset, when they were batting, collapsed to 111 for six, losing five for 22 in 24 balls. Four overs, the whole game changed. And that's what Somerset have got to keep telling themselves. They've got to play with a real intensity, They've really got to try and starve the Leicestershire team, especially the new man in of singles, to get him into, into his sort of rhythm. And I think now Blackwell is going to be bowling over the wicket to the left-hander, trying to pitch it into the rough, offering him the offside to drive through, hopefully turn through the gate. Interesting to see how many people that Graham Smith keeps in the circle. In fact, he looks like he's going to perch himself at silly point, trying to put a bit of pressure on Mongia, who is, by the way, a very good player of spin bowling. Oh. Well, that's a quicker ball from Blackwell. He's absolutely fired that one in, and Mongia's helped himself for four. Don't think silly points or the funny side of that. Yeah, you've got to be silly sometimes to stand there, and um, I think it's a cardinal sin when you've just had a wicket. The next ball goes for four runs. You've just got the new batsman in. He feels more comfortable and you've lost a little, the little bit of the momentum that you just managed to gather. Well, adventurous shot from Mongier down the pitch. You would expect that from Dinesh Mongier. You say that he's a particularly good player of spin. You say that with a certain sort of um, rueful memory on your face. Has he hit you? Uh, we tried to. I uh, managed to get him out, actually. <laughs> but uh, no, no, he is a very good player of spin. When I have played against him, you get the feeling, especially similar to a lot of Indian batsmen, that they're brought up against it and they don't deal in ones really, it's four or six. Um, so and that's the attitude that he will bring to this innings. He will not want Blackwell to settle, he want to get on top of him early on. I can't help feeling that Maddy is the key wicket here at the yeah. moment. If they could get him out, they really would be back into the game. Well, in Maddie's score of 54 so far, he's hit eight fours. And that's one area that the Somerset team can target now. If they can start limiting the boundaries, just keep Maddie to singles, create some pressure in that respect. Nine overs gone, 81 for one. Here is the Blackwell wicket, first ball of the over. Ackerman tried to get down the pitch, but it did turn on him. And he was done like a kipper. He loves that. All spin bowlers love that. Getting somebody down the wicket. Turn, bounce, spin. Good wicket. Daramadi, as we mentioned, has got 54, 34. He's the rock in this team now that everybody else has got to come in and play around. Ackerman played a good partnership. Now it's up to Mongia and Maddy to get another one going. 77 needed. Sabres need, having got the breakthrough, to kick down the door. They need to pick up two or three in a hurry and really put the pressure back on, Come on the Foxes. It's interesting, oh. Nasser Hussain was talking about the pressure of batting second in a semi-final when it's all to win. Ah! Oh, 
that they obviously uh, got excited about something out there, but it just looked like an awful lot of bat was involved in that. Was it pad bat? Pitches in line, swings back, that's fine. Well, it was pad bat. So Mongia may have had a bit of luck there. Oh. And that's a very clever shot from Dinesh Mongia. Delicate sweep. Now how many times do you see it? A good shout. Similarly that Willoughby had against Wood in the first innings. The next ball then goes for four. We've had one here. Oh. Parsons a good shout the ball before. Then Mongia goes down the next delivery. Sweeps him fine for four runs. Something that we hate as cricketers when we feel that like we've got a wicket. And then the next ball disappears out of the park. But it's not a good, easy job being an umpire. Well, it was pad before bat, but there was so much bat involved in it. It sounded so woody, you can perfectly understand why Peter Willey had to give the benefit, the, the batsman the benefit of the doubt. Wait. We get to see it in uh, slow motion from all sorts of different angles. Umpires out there get one look at it, and they have to make their mind up immediately. And remember, the good book is uh, very precise in what it says. Benefit of the doubt to the batsman. There are a few bowlers around who think it should be exactly the opposite. Agreed. But uh, it was it's amazing to see how how heartfelt the appeal was from Parsons. It seemed obvious enough to him. And Maddie seems to be eyeing up that uh, deep square boundary, fine leg boundary. There's nobody at home down there, he's gone for the sweep, hit him just under the armpit. Yeah, great open spaces down there at deep backward square leg. Well, that's a pretty useful over, only uh, five runs from it, the four from Mongia was the uh, problem, 86 for one after ten. Among you, just picked up where Ackerman left off. In fairness, I'm sure they'll have communicated out there that Maddie just keep ticking along. He's the rock. He's the one who's going to pick up the singles, then the odd boundary. Among you, which was lucky enough when he got an early boundary against Blackwell, has managed to get into double figures pretty quickly. So that will have settled his nerves. It's a fantastic crowd out there. The atmosphere is building. No matter how much cricket you've played, you will still feel the butterflies in the stomach. And to get an early boundary, get away early on, really settles them for you. Silly points gone now for Mongia. That experiment has uh, gone back in the box for the moment. Question is, who else is going to bowl spin for Somerset? If we think spin might be the key, I guess Wes Durston is the other, the other candidate. Well, Graham Smith bowls a bit of off-spin as well, the captain. He's done it in test cricket, he's done it in one-day international level. Is it his day? Is it the way he's going to say goodbye to Somerset with some uh, fantastic bowling figures? He does give it a good spin. High in the air. There's a man under it. And that's out. Triscothic takes the catch as easy as you like. So Dinesh Mongia has come, and Dinesh Mongia has gone for 12. Yeah, and that man Blackwell has done it again. This time he's done it in flight. Not a big boundary down to the long on area. He's done him. Mongia's come down, doesn't believe in hitting the ball on the ground. He's gone for the maximum, gone for six. But unfortunately for him, Chris Gothic has taken the catch. A tremendous bit of bowling there from Blackwell. And Somerset are fighting back. Yeah, Mongi has gone for 12, 88 for 2, still 70 needed to win this. Now only 57 balls to get them in. I think this could be a lot tighter than people may have thought 10, 15 minutes ago. Yeah, you picked it, Charles. They just needed that wicket. Ackerman played a bit of a sloppy shot, albeit some good bowling from Blackwell. But there they are. They're back in, they're fighting. The Somerset team 
They've realised now that they've got a sniff of a chance. Can they take it? Interestingly enough, Blackwell's kept five men in, stopping one. James Allenby is the new batsman. He will be on strike now because the ball was in the air for such a long time. Maddy Mongia crossed. Allenby from Western Australia, but not playing for Leicestershire as an overseas player, so he must be on a cold pack or a European passport, something like that. Now that silly point is back in. And that will be a bit disappointing to Ian Blackwell that they got a single there. That's annoying, because that's gone straight to the man at 45. Andy Caddick, he's an experienced man down there. Uh, for a big man, he's an, uh, quite an athletic guy as well, good arm. But when the ball goes straight to you at 45, it shouldn't be your one. And uh, therefore, he's got the man in charge back, back facing. Oh, that's out as well! So Blackwell is working his magic here. Somerset are right back in this, don't you forget that. Superb bowling again from Blackwell, he's kept mid-offer. He's thrown the carrot up to Maddy. He's, he's seen in his eyes that it's going for six, and it's a tremendous delivery. Here we go, it's a bit of flight. His eyes have opened up for long off, turns, bounces, and takes the bails off again. Tremendous bit of bowling from the left arm spinner. Well, this Blackwell spell is inspired. Three overs, no maidens, three for 21 now for Ian Blackwell. He's not doing himself any harm when it comes to international duties either. Darren Maddy has gone for 56 from 39. Leicester now have got to call on all their resources to win this one. There he is, the man who's done the job for Somerset so far. He's got them back in with the possibility of winning it with spin. He's come in the pitch early on in the first semi-final we saw, didn't take much spin, but now I believe as the surface is scarring up a bit, it's starting to turn. And in fairness to the Leicestershire spinners, they did a fine job when Leicester bowled, and now so are the Somerset spinners. Well, here comes the other spinner. This is Wes Durston with his uh, little off breaks. We were talking a little while ago about the collapse that Somerset had when they were batting, when they went from 89 for one to 111 for six. They lost five for 22 in 24 balls. Well, in 18 balls, Somerset have lost three for 60, uh, Leicestershire have lost three for 16. So they're just having a bit of a tumble here as well. They really fancy it now, the Somerset team. You can see they're up in the field, they're keen. The wicketkeeper is constantly talking, encouraging, urging his players on. He knows, he feels the fact that another wicket now is a real opportunity. I think we've identified the new batsman. He's the vastly experienced Jeremy Snape, a man who was there when the Foxes won the title last year at Edgbaston. On strike now. Some good cricket going on out there at the moment. Let me tell you, there's some big pressure on these guys. Big pressure on two teams. Somerset were out of it. Now they fought their way back in. And Leicestershire have done what they didn't really want to do. They've got two new batsmen at the crease. Not something you really target in 2020 cricket. 1st high as well. So uh, that's 12 overs gone. It's 94 for three. Let's go and find Ian. Hi, Charles. Yeah, I'm down right in amongst it, <laughs> amongst the Leicester boys, and I'm with Paul Nixon, who's uh, next in to bat, is that right? Yeah, next in, uh, big fella, so, yeah, looking forward to it. What do you reckon? How are you going here? Yeah, just sadly we lost two frustrating wickets there. Um, unusual for our guys there at that stage. Uh, just trying to work the ones and twos. One big over will really get us back on track. That can come any time. Just need to keep wickets in hand now for a while. Just last two or three overs. What about this wicket? Has it changed in complexion any since the, the rain got on it just a wee bit? Uh, I don't think so. I just think it's the way that the um, you know the ball's getting a bit older, a bit softer. It's just maybe gripping a little bit more. You know, it's 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 getting used as the days goes on, obviously. And um, these guys are bowling pretty well at the moment. 
Well, Darren Maddy played a, a gem of a knock. It's now up to a Mr. Snape and Mr. Allenby. Can you tell us a little bit about him? Because I don't think our Sky Sports viewers will know an awful lot about him. No, Jimmy's a very positive all-rounder who um, didn't get a ball today, but um, he's just come out of league cricket at the weekend. He's, uh, last weekend, he got a fantastic double hundred, so he's full of confidence and he's playing really well. Spent a lot of time as a youngster in Australia and Perth. So, um, yeah, looking for big things, big bright future ahead. And this is geared up for you, a little cameo at the end to win the game, what do you reckon? Yeah, it'd be nice, absolutely right, yeah, I mean, um, just got to keep playing now for a bit. Snape is very experienced, he'll, he'll talk Jimmy through it as well, so, another four there, better clap that, keep him happy. But, um, no, we, we, you know, just got to keep calm now, just keep calm, heads. Good to talk to you, Paul, back upstairs. Too short from Blackwell there, firing that one in, trying to get one slightly quicker past uh, Snape. So uh, he's got two more balls to bowl in this spell, Ian Blackwell, and then he's done because of three for 25. Oh, now this could be tight if there's a direct hit. Oh, that is going to be very close. Brilliant stuff. Gazard's the keeper, direct hit. Absolutely brilliant. Here we go, Gazard picks up, throws, direct hit. Well, that is going to be really tight. George Sharp's got to make this decision. Yes. Here comes the decision, George Sharp saying he's out. Well, that is a huge wicket getting shot of Snape like that. Well, Gazard's been up for it. He's been encouraging his players all the way through. He sniffed the chance of Somerset getting back into this game, and he's decided he was the man to put his hand up. They've gone for a short single. He's got away from behind the stumps well. Here we go. There he's taken off. He's got his right glove off quickly. Throw on the run, a tremendous accurate throw, taking the stumps out. Fantastic cricket from Somerset, good spirit. Snape gone for six, 98 for four, 60 needed from 43 balls. And it was really interesting that in the huddle there, Graham Smith was really working on his men. He was really giving them a G up, saying, come on, we can really do this now. We turn the pressure. This is the nitty gritty. This is where we win the game. This is where we get through to the final. Yep, you're right. The end for Blackwell, four overs, no maidens, three for 25, a brilliant spell that just may have turned this game the Sabres way. Certainly, he's played a great part in his team's exercise here, he's got them back into the game with left arm spin, and hasn't he done it well? Here he is, Ackerman's wicket down the wicket, orthodox left arm spin, turns, bounces, stumped. Again, Mongia deals in big boundaries. He's gone for the maximum this time round. Didn't connect with the middle of the back. Caught long on. And then Maddy's kept mid off, tempted him, turns, bounces, and off you go. Three wickets for Blackwell. Tremendous spell of bowling for his side. Right, well, now the pressure goes on to young Wes Durston. Just three off his first over. Bowling to the left handed Paul Nixon, who is the new batsman. 60 needed from 42. A twitch. <laughs> we oh. mentioned it earlier on, there is a twitch. Oh. He bowls it very full, doesn't he, Durston? He likes to give it a bit of air and he likes to get it up there. Strange grip for an off-spin bowler as well. Doesn't just use the first two fingers on your hand, he actually uses the first three fingers, almost like a leg spinner's grip. Uh, doesn't get too much away drift from the right-hander. You see it, there he goes, he'll pop it in there. There he goes, he's got the three fingers on it. Hundred up. Just wonder that last over of the Somerset Sabres innings when Gazard did so well with the bat. How crucial is that going to be when we get to uh, the end of this game? This end of this semi-final. He got 16 runs from that final over. He just may have given the Sabres enough, and he gave them the momentum as well to take off the field. Again, that spun. Good take from the keeper. He's had a good game so far behind. 
He's taken a couple of catches, uh, sorry, a couple of stump ins. There, great run out for his side. He's bubbling, he's buoyant, and often you find that a team get their energy from the way the keeper reacts, and he's doing a good job. How do you assess young Durston as he bowls here? Here's a big LBW shout. He's, he's doing a good job. As I mentioned just now, he's got a different type of grip to most off spinners. He gets a lot of in drift, not out drift. Ball up, ball up. Cut off, it'll only be a single. Okay. He's only conceded four runs from this over so far. Last ball coming up. You just get the feeling that the Foxes need a couple of boundaries here just to kick-start them again. Singles isn't going to be enough. They need 56 from 37. The rate's up to uh, nine and over, plus. This is going to be a sprint round the boundary, and they'll certainly get two. So, 14 overs gone. We've got six to go in this second semi-final. It's 104 for four. Four for four. 54 needed from 36 balls. This is going to be tight here in Nasser and David. Yeah, it's a nipper, is this? All about a little bit of bottle. Placing the final for the winners. That helps. Allenby just ease one over extra cover for four. His first boundary, lots of pressure out there. This game's going to go to the wire. It's going to go to the last over, definitely. At this stage, Somerset were 107 for five, Leicester 108 for four. In fact, after that delivery, scores a level. 109 for five, played 109 for four. It is, it's bottle. Nerves coming into it. There's the Ackerman. Leicestershire's captain can just sit and watch. It's these two in the middle, partnership, Allenby and Nixon. And then the remaining batsman, 49 from 34. Singles down the ground, 15 fours and 1-6 in 110 for four into the 15th over. And you keep glancing at the board, you're counting down. 48 from 33. Leicester Fox's manager, James Whittaker. Oh, right. Good stop. That's a position you don't see Andrew Caddick in a lot. You get John T. Rhodes, Paul Collingwood. Drew Caddick at backward point. He's better than them, Andy. You know, he, he really enjoys this. He doesn't let on. Look like anybody scoring runs off him, but he rises to this occasion. He loves it. Blackie, Blackie! I remember a game that we did earlier down at Tall to the 2020 match, and I just had to laugh. He bowled the first two overs. I said that's the end of Andrew Caddick's fingers. Two overs, not for 42. He went to work kicking his cap and all sorts. Go on, Jim. Bad ball, Jim. Third man into the circle. There's a deep mid wicket. Drops out to that boundary. Last ball of the 15th. They'll push for two here. Just one. 111 for four. That's Charlie the Fox. He he headed the, the race. I got him wrong. And Stumpy. Stumpy the dragon at the back there. Nice to see him getting on. Did he have a bit of a set too earlier on, but they seem to be fine now. 47 to win from five overs. 
Charl Langerfeld comes back into the attack. Good bowling from West Durston, two overs for eight. So we're back to seam. Boundary ball, no. Hildreth with a fielding. It's very much an offside player, Jim Allenby. Just to set himself to go over cover, square, square cover. Lots of smiles, he'll be under pressure. Sadler, the injured Leicester Fox from last year, shoulder injury. Allenby comes in. That's his area, cover. Dot ball's priceless, I just keep looking. After 15.2 overs, Somerset 114 for six, Leicester 113 for four. Neck and neck. Some can only watch. Bit of in swing, outside edge, four more. And have a little bit of luck. Captain think Graham Smith about this. A little bit wide. Edged it away for four. Allen B moves on to 16 of 16 deliveries. Target now 41 of 27. They still need a partnership, Leicester. Wickets for Somerset will be the key. That's a good stop too. Anything straight down the ground, mid on and mid off, or back towards the boundary, but slightly wide. Good bowling again. He's got a little bit of in swing right, drift. Right. Fielding for Graham ah! Smith. Bells are off. Not out. Good fielding, they're strong in the field, Somerset. Well, Nixon wasn't really looking here, he was expecting Graham Smith to throw the other end, and then there's a little bit of a hurry up at the end. He's well in. <coughs> 40 from 25, Leicester Foxes require. Clipped into the leg side, the look for two. Hildreth patrols that boundary. Useful over, nine runs from it. 120 for four. Graham David Lloyd, have your second. What do you think, buddy? Uh, pass one pass more that side. No, pass next one that side for me, please. Lungers! What are you thinking, Johnson's Martha? Richard Johnson comes back into the attack. Well, one over non for 11, he's coming back into Somerset's side. He's had lots of injuries, niggly injuries, awkward injuries. He was run out to, without scoring when Somerset batted. So it's his second over. Length ball, Allenby down the ground. He's a goner. Blackwell safe hands. Good bowling change from Smith. Brings Johnson back into the attack. Blackwell does the rest. Well, he's having a good day in the field, Ian Blackwell. He's got wickets, and then he's finding himself in the key positions at the right time. A length ball to start with from Richard Johnson, and it was a pretty good shot. And I'm afraid he found the one fielder out there, and a good low catch from Ian Blackwell. Good work, Graham Smith. Excellent change of bowling. James Allenby's gone for 17. Leicester 120 for five. Let's have another try with uh, Graham. Graham, it's David Lloyd up here. Uh, it's very shaky. 
One more time. Graham, can you hear me? No, he's not getting me. I just wanted to ask him, what's the gut feeling out there? What is your gut feeling? Nixon's looking for two. Maunders sends him back. My gut feeling is the pressure of chasing Bumble. This game means so much to Leicester. I know you might say, well, it means a lot to Somerset as well, but they, their whole season, two seasons, they believe they are the 2020 champs. We look at Maunders' stats there. Justin Langer, his hero. That's the untouchables. That's what they feel they are in 2020 cricket. This is the day that they've all been waiting for. They could just mess it up in these last 3.4 overs. Well, I've got Somerset here. Somerset in the field, squeeze the game, take wickets, got two batsmen in, and there's no partnership, they've only just started. Deliveries tick by, they definitely need boundaries for me. And I can tell you, he is very nervous. James Whittaker, very, very nervous director of cricket. It's <laughs> all up in there. Maunders dives back, desperate dive, back into his crease, he's a dot ball. Good over so far, only two from it. The rate's gone up above, ten and over. Good dive in, good work, always get the dive in. Don't leave anything to chance. Long chase here, not found the boundary. It's developing, is this over? One thing they don't need are no balls. Be an absolute killer to overstep on that front foot, Richard Johnson coming back in. We talked a lot about nerves, but rustiness as well when you're coming back from injuries to play in this sort of situation. Has been an international bowler, Richard Johnson. And that's excellent from Johnson, finishes the 17th, 124 for five. Just four runs from that over. Somerset have gone for their big match international players and they're not disappointing at the moment. Not a great start for Langevelt and Johnson. At the death, Graham Smith has gone to experience. There's the situation in the game. 157 for nine. Everyone thought that was slightly below par. It's looking pretty decent now. 34 needed from the last three overs. Leicester are going to need some big hits. Otis Gibson coming in next. Leicester, the Foxes, you need a hero. Who's it going to be? They were 74 without loss, Leicestershire. They're 124 for five now at the end of the 17. What have you got? John Maunders. What have you got, Paul Nixon? Graham Smith has got options. Durston back into the attack, off spin. Maunders down the ground. Yeah! And another terrific catch. Truscossi. Well, you might say, in the big time. Well, their fielding has been exceptional. Somerset. Truscossi. Long off. Takes a very good low catch. He gets excited there, Marcus. International player, test matches, Ashes. He's excited about getting through to the final against Lancashire. Maunders goes for one. Leicester in a bit of trouble, 124 for six. Another good bowling change, brings his spinner into the attack. Langerfeld goes out of the attack, off spin, take the pace off. Just Gothic with another good catch. We've seen some stunning catches today here at the Brit Oval. New batsman, Otis Gibson. Former pace king for Glamorgan, this lad. Otis Gibson, hero Malcolm Marshall. Nice a bit of Reggie. And a game of golf. He can hit a massive cricket ball, Otis Gibson. One of the nice men in the game. Reverse sweep. Doesn't find anybody other than short fine leg. These two at the crease, first game of the season, started off 2020. Nixon and Gibson against Nottinghamshire, and they saw them home. Gibson hit the winning run. 
Nixon goes again, reverse sweep. Same shot, same result. Just gets one run this time, brings Otis Gibson on strike. He hits a long ball. He uses a very, very heavy bat. That is a monster, that thing. Well, Otis doesn't usually block off spinners. Big bat, big man. And he got time to block. Two and a half overs left, 33 or 15 deliveries. Gibson can win this game for Leicester, definitely. Well, he's had a look at it, into the leg side. He should get two here. He's still sharp between the wickets, Otis Gibson, 36 years of age. Does a lot of coaching as well, and he's had a good career. As I mentioned, he was down there at Glamorgan, he's been out in South Africa, played once for the West Indies. Loves his cricket. Needs some boundaries. There he goes. He's not got it. He's not got it, just a single. Good work again from Triscothic. Smith has got his key fielders in the right areas. He's got his pressure men. Marcus Triscothic would have been in this situation many a time. Nixon, he's fired up. Look at the intensity in his eyes. He'll run hard, he'll push everything. He won't give up. He will not give up. Smith still talking, moving the field as the bowler was running up. Nixon moves away. Reverse again, he's got one, he's played three, got one. Six, extraordinary. Well, if it, first you fail, try again. Two, he just dabbed, absolutely nowhere near the middle. And then coach, talk us through that one. The reverse sweep for six. Unbelievably effective, game on now, 24 from 12. It, it was absolutely imperative, he got six from that ball. And he did. Left-handed Nixon turns round, right-handed, sweeps it for six. 24 from 12, Leicestershire need. Somerset 157 for nine, Leicestershire 134 for six. Two overs to go. Richard Johnson bowled a great over last time. Got some in swing, big appeal. It's drifting down the leg side, leg by 23 from 11. Paul Nixon, big shots. Ortiz Gibson, bigger shots, potential. Johnson's the key. His last seven deliveries have only gone for five runs. He's got his Yorker absolutely spot on. I don't care how good a hitter of a ball you are, Otis Gibson. Paul Nixon, you can't hit a Yorker. So far, Johnson has got it right on the money. Excellent bowling again from Johnson. It'll just be a single, but it brings Gibson on strike. This is the over Nasser, isn't it? He's got to go. This is the one that has to go. Got to leave themselves with something like 12, 13 from the last over, do you think? Depends who bowls the last over, because at the death, I think Johnson is the best bowler. So if they get seven, eight more off this over, they can easily get 14 off the last. Plays down the ground. Will it get there? Will it get there? It does touch and go. Blackwell doesn't get the dive in. Gibson finds that boundary. 18 from nine deliveries. Leicester Shanee. This game's ticking again. Well, they needed a six off the last ball and they needed a four then. Only two singles in the over so far. It was nearly, nearly spot on from Johnson. Couple of inches short and Gibson put it away. Smith moving fielders around all over the place. He's taken Blackwell away from long on. And got a slightly quicker fielder out there. Working hard now, Graham Smith. Balled him, balled him, what a wicket that is! He's dragged it on, kicked it on. Nerve, absolute nerve from Richard Johnson. It's an inducker full length. Somerset celebrate again. Johnson gets it right again. Can't hit Yorkers anywhere. Bit unlucky, Otis Gibson hits it onto his foot, rolls onto middle stump. 
Johnson celebrates. He knows that's a big wicket. 18 from 8 required. Three wickets left. Danger, danger, man goes. Otis Gibson, Ball Johnson. Good bowling. Full length Yorkers. Well, everybody's having a great day here. Gets thirsty work, though. 18 from 8. Who's going to get this slot in the final? Lancashire already there. Camped up in the dressing room, relaxing. Lord Henderson. His hero is uh, Shane Ward. That's a bit of you too. Yeah, a bit of fishing and golf as well. But he doesn't like his Yorkers. Bean and Gon Johnson back into this side. They've wanted him back. They're eight down. Three for 20 now, Richard Johnson. Yorkers all the way. Well, whoever took the gamble to rest younger players and bring in the senior death bowler in Richard Johnson. It was a gamble, his first game, and this is why he's playing. When it comes to the pressure situation, he has produced the goods. Two wickets in two balls. Gibson, Henderson, both go with Yorkers. One delivery, Claude Henderson. Leicester, 140 for eight. They need 18 more from seven deliveries, and Richard Johnson is on a hat-trick. 2020 skill from Johnson. What do I want to ball? I want to ball Yorkers. I'm going to get a little bit of drift as well. David Masters took a stunning catch in Somerset's innings to dismiss Graham Smith, one of the very best. He's now got to do it with about 18 from seven deliveries, eight down. Richard Johnson on a 2020 hat trick. No slips. Cheeky. Just clips it to Andy Caddick, it's straight enough as well. What a way to play a hat-trick delivery. Richard Johnson finishes his spell. Three overs, three for 21. Turn the game round right at the end. Good captaincy, Graham Smith. He's manoeuvred his bowlers round. Done a great job, Johnson and Captain Smith just manufactured this innings, tried to protect 157, and they've done it well. Still game on, 17 needed from the last over. Masters has got to get this strike to Nixon. And here's one for you. After 19 overs, Somerset 141 for eight. Leicester absolutely neck and neck, 141 for eight. Langerfeld back into the attack, three overs, none for 33. What do they need, Leicester? It's simple. Get Nixon on strike. Important last over. And Gazard. 26 in 19 balls in general. And the important innings that was from Gazard. 16. And the Masters has got to get Nixon on strike. Can't see the point of playing that shot. Fine leg is back. He was only going to get one. I suppose that would get Nixon on strike. Just get bat on ball. Great shot that, the walking draw. Clouds are rolling around here at the Brit Oval. We're into the last over of the first semi-final. Langerfeld again. Hit and a miss. Hit and a miss. Nixon is on strike. This is what Leicester should need it. Leicester Fox has had to get Nixon on strike. Carl Gazard may just be a contender for man of the match here. The scores were absolutely neck and neck after 19 overs. It was Gazard who propelled Somerset in that last innings. Kept wicket pretty well. 16 from four balls, four boundaries. Shove a couple of sixes if you like. Graham Smith in the bowler's ear again. The weather's just closing in a little bit at the oval. Some storm clouds away in the distance. But they'll get through these four deliveries, that is for certain. It's gone very, very dark. 
Can Paul Nixon do something special? The champions could be going out if he doesn't. 16 of four deliveries, four boundaries needed. Not taking it. Nixon himself knows he has to do it. He's not taking the single. Excellent bowling again. These two, as you said it, international proven bowlers at the death. It's down to you. Do your job. And they've got Yorkers in. 16 from three deliveries. It will be a wide. It just adds a little bit of spice. 15 needed off three. Bit of a shimmy from Nixon. Langevelt looks. It's umpire Willie. Oh, the champions going out. Well, they need three sixes, or two sixes and a four. Don't lose a wicket. Has he got a boundary? He's got a single, and they're coming back for two. They're coming back for two. It'll be a dive. He's in, he's in. He's in, he's in. Well, he's in then. <laughs> I meant to say he's in. 13 from two. He's just said to him, don't ball a no ball or a wide. Just in case he didn't realise that. Thank you, Skip. Oh, two sixes, get them 12. Scores will be level. We have lost one wicket left. Less two wicket, two sixes needed. He's not going to get one. Goes away, gets two runs. And unfortunately for the Foxes, it looks like their golden 2020 season, two seasons, is coming to an end. And it looks like Somerset are going to be in the final with Lancashire. Well, their followers are absolutely thrilled. Stumpy the Dragon. He'll be absolutely delighted. Leicestershire have given it everything. Not least Nixon. His last delivery, looking for a six. And it, he's got it. Last ball's gone for six. But well, what a shame for Leicester Foxes. But just look at this elation from Somerset Sabres. Didn't think they got enough with 157 for nine. And Leicester Foxes finish 153 for eight, they're just short, they've got themselves in the final. Lancashire versus Somerset will contest that final. It's been excellent cricket throughout the day, action-packed from start to finish, there's winners and the losers, it's Somerset that have gone through, and they might just be a little bit more of a fancied team here. Well, they had all the stars, international players, Prescothic, Caddick, Smith, Blackwell, Johnson, Charles Langevelt. The young lads also put their hands up. The keeper, Gazard, had an excellent game with bat and gloves. Parsons, a good all-round cricketer, will make for a cracking final. There's lots of superstars on show this evening. Let's just hope those covers disappear. There is a bit of rain around, but there are some real stars on show now with the Somerset-Lancashire final. And the crowd have stayed and watched. And the Cider Boys are happy. Well done, Somerset. Excellent cricket. Well, they're loving every minute of it. And again, it's been a good team effort. We talk about Leicestershire as being the team. But Somerset have also shown it. Somerset had probably the stronger pace attack. Leicestershire relied so much on the spinners who did the job, five wickets between Leicestershire spinners. But it's the strength of Somerset Sabres, pace attack, particularly at the end, right at the death. Richard Johnson, Charles Langerfeld, just getting that full length. York is in. Charles, who have you got? I've got the man who really put in a fantastic last over, Richard Johnson. They ended up with figures, I think, three for 23, something like that. Didn't start too well for you, but what a comeback. Yeah, yeah, we just, uh, obviously, in those conditions, you've got to try and get it as full as you can, and luckily I did, I managed to do that on, on the day. Now, at one stage, it looked like, when Darren Maddy was in, it was all over for you lot, but then I thought Ian Blackwell probably turned it on its head. Yeah, he bowled brilliantly, and uh, we knew that uh, the spinners were obviously going to play a big part, and uh, Blackie just bowled absolutely awesome. And what was it like, out of, I think, is that your first game of 2020? 
Yeah, I managed to uh, get away from it so far, but no, it was awesome, mate. Great uh, atmosphere in here, uh, great game to play. And you're going to play against Lancashire in the final? Yeah, strong team, but uh, you know we're, we're going to be the underdogs, so we'll give it our best and see how it goes. And obviously you'd like to send Graham Smith off with a nice win. Oh, absolutely, he's been a top lad and uh, he's been so good for us and uh, yeah, it'd be nice to send him off. OK, well, let's keep our fingers crossed that the rain holds off. It's awfully black overhead and that you have a good game in the, uh, in the final. Cheers, Charles. OK, back upstairs. Let's have a look at uh, Leicester's reply here. Darren Maddock, electric, 56 from 39. Lots of starts again. It's D. Ackerman with 19, Mongia with 12, Allenby with 17, Paul Nixon, high and dry at the end with 27 from 18 deliveries, but they've just fallen short, 153 for eight. Somerset experience told in the end, international bowlers really came to the party. Blackwell got the wickets to start with. Started the rot, Ian Blackwell, three for 25 of four. And then right at the end, Richard Johnson on debut in 2020 cricket, three overs, three for 21. Those two really broke the middle of the Leicestershire innings. Excellent performance. So Somerset have won through to the final against Lancashire, 157 for nine, plays Leicestershire's 153 for eight. Somerset Sabres have won by four runs. What a game of cricket. <laughs> too much, too much for me here. Now, it's a lot of pressure in 2020, but when they're as tight as that with as many people in, it's hard to deal with. A lot of things going on in your mind as a captain out there. Yeah, lots of things, and uh, I, I felt we were, were very short in 157. You know, we didn't play the spin as well, and we let ourselves down, but bowlers pulled us through superb. Absolutely, a couple of guys really showed their quality under pressure. Yeah, Blackwell bowled superbly in the middle. Uh, Johnson and Langenfeld at the end, getting it in the block hole there, that's high pressure situation, and to do it regularly like they did, superb. Man. And what about a young fellow who's managed to pick up the man on the match award, Carl Gazard, credit for him? Yeah, that last over got us to somewhere decent, and uh, you know, he's a new boy coming to the team, trying to find his feet, and uh, superb in the field also, great energy and a couple of run outs and stumpings. Great to talk to you, uh, get out of the rain, we'll see you a bit later. So indeed, the man of the match for the second semi-final of this 2005 2020 Cup is Carl Gazard. Carl receives a check from Gavin Slater for £750 and a magnum of Verve Clico Champagne. Well played. That looked hectic out there towards the end. It was a bit manic, yeah, after the start they had, but we just fought hard and we've got a massive amount of self-belief and we just keep going and that's our result. So. Now talk us through your little batting display, the last over, 15 coming off it, must have been pleased with that. Yeah, I was happy with that. I know where I like to hit the ball and it happened to get a lucky inside edge for four and things like that. It went my way and that's what happens at the end sometimes. Now it looks like you've got a real team spirit and a real buzz out there in the field and you as the keeper, well you're the linchpin behind that. Are your job to keep the boys going? Yeah, I try and lift everyone. I mean after that start you can see a few heads dropping and just try and keep everyone up and we fight and we fight hard and we get our rewards in for it so we're happy with that. Well it's an outstanding performance not only by the team but yourself as well. I'll let you get out of the rain. Thanks for talking to us and well done. Carl Gazard, ladies and gentlemen. And Charles, that concludes the presentation ceremony.